<laughs> Hello and welcome to Dragon Stadium here on the campus of Round Rock High School. Mike Rose along with Bruce Kipperman and Blake Carrera. So glad you could join us tonight. It is pouring outside. The Round Rock Dragons are hosting the Stony Point Tigers in just a little bit, but uh, here we are. It's raining and uh, my chair is outside. The door is open and these guys uh, ha who did not grow up in the great white north as I did or have numb toes. Is that the deal, Bruce? Uh, it's a little bit numb toes, but I, I think let's take a step back and welcome you back to the booth, Mike. Yeah, well, thank you for that. I also want to give a shout out to Mr. Rodney Rodriguez for filling in for me last he week. He did a, it was great working with him, such a professional, and I think I might have thrown him out of, uh, out of, out of his comfort zone, but we're glad to have you back for sure. We missed you, and we're glad that your uh, three-day rendezvous went very well downtown. Thank, thank you. Yeah, the, the hot date reference that you keep alluding to, uh, that was... Uh, Project Tina. That was... <laughs> That made me <laughs> <laughs> that made me <laughs> laugh and so this. So thank you very much. And of course, yeah, Rodney, very much a professional, and uh, I strive to be like him someday. Maybe we'll see. But uh, glad to be back. Um, it's going to be hard to become Rodney with me next to you. That's true. That's very true. Uh, tough decision to to not be in the broadcast booth last week, but uh, an experience that I will never forget. And so I appreciate you guys letting me be gone for a little bit. But again, it's good to be back. But man. <laughs> Famous last words, guys. Uh, both uh, Bruce and Blake were talking about it wasn't supposed to rain tonight, and there's it's puddling up on the track yeah. right now. I don't so. think this qualifies as rain. This is now a storm. <coughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah. Luckily, no thunder, but it is coming down. So I, where it came from. I guess let's talk about this, Mike. I know I wanted to get on the air earlier before, your, uh, before the interview was played, but this is the big game. It is. And now weather becomes an element. When I look at the stats, we average, we being the Round Rock Dragons, average 200 yards more rushing per game than Stony Point. Right. I got to believe that will be an a distinct advantage. Yes. And well. I think with the emotion of this week and the focus and purpose that they come out tonight, I'm really excited and interest interested to see because the winner of this game has that number four seed in their control. Yeah. Right. You've got Hendrickson. You've got uh, Cedar. You got Vandergriff, and by no means has Hendrickson or Cedar Ridge since their spot in. No, they right. still have to play Round Rock. Yep, they still have to play Van uh, other schools. But this is really the first head-to-head -head game we've had besides Vandergriff that I thought we fared very well. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting with all the things that have gone on this week because it's been a very emotional week. I believe that this is the right opponent for this week for the Round Rock Dragons. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Coach Cheatham alluded to it. You'll hear it in the interview, but <coughs> Thank you, pardon. it's uh, the rushing attack, that the, the, the explosiveness the Dragons have had, both Ryan O'Keefe and Marquise Brown on the ground. Uh, you you got to assume that Stony Point, Cedar Ridge, Hendrickson, our remaining opponents are all figuring out how to stop the Dragons on the ground. So now with the weather as it is, the passing game kind of gets shut down a little bit, and so we're going to have to really put put our money where our feet are. That, that's exactly right. We don't have to rely on that second half of the uh, of the dynamic, right, where Stony Point has a much more prolific passing game that they're relying upon. Uh, I think they're not going to be able to stop the running game. And I think it's going to really come down to those front five that are focused and playing extremely well uh, on the offensive line. And my fear is, like we've had a couple weeks in the past, we will score, and we will score quickly. Mm -hmm. Can our defense contain and get off the field and rest? And that's going to be yeah. the the test of the night, and I know we'll go to the interview, is can the defense stay within themselves and not do emotionally irresponsible and immature things because of the what will be out there and what, what kind of uh, – what their purpose is tonight. It is to play for Coach Roberts, right? but they've got to stay within themselves. I think that's a perfect uh, segue for us, Blake, to head to Coach Sheeves' interview, and we can come back and... Uh, see how accurate I was. See, I know. See, come back and uh, talk further about Coach Roberts and what these Dragons are playing for tonight. Mike Rose with the KMAX Sports Broadcast Network here with Coach Jeff Cheatham of the Round Rock Dragons getting ready to take on Stony Point here on, on Friday in Dragon Stadium. Uh, a difficult week, um for the, uh, the hearts and minds of the players, but uh, so definitely something to rally around and focus on. Coach, just let you uh, expound on where the, the hearts and minds are of your team right now. Well, unfortunately, on a Tuesday morning, uh, we lost one of our coaches, uh, Coach Roberts. 
uh, collapsed in his stairwell as he was leaving his house. And we don't know what all transpired as far as that. There's no foul play, but uh, he went with the Lord uh, Tuesday morning. And uh, heaven gained a, a soldier. And uh, our hearts have been very heavy this week. Uh, it's been very difficult uh, emotionally, uh, for sure. Uh, but uh, there's two things about life that are certain. It's short, but it does go on. And uh, we've got to keep grinding, and we, uh, we've, we've got to get up, and we've got, to, we've got a game that we've got to get ready for. And uh, I've been really pleased, and, and uh, the outpouring of the community and people around us and all the programs around us sent their prayers, and they've really been felt. And uh, I really want to say thank you to everyone that uh, that has uh, been, been associated with all this. It's obvious to... Uh to those of us that follow the, the Dragons on Twitter and, and the players as well who um, nothing but accolades and, and praise and thanks for the, the many lessons and, and uh, gifts that Coach Roberts gave to these young men. So definitely have something to, to rally around and, and play for, which is, which is huge. Um, definitely our hearts and, and thoughts and prayers go out to all of you as a staff and the team. And um, But uh, like you said, it goes on and it's good to hear that you have something to rally around, as in football and each other. So, what's uh, with that hurdle um, in, in the way? Um, what about Friday night that uh, excites you about this week's goings on? You know, Stony Point's uh, you know team that we've uh, you know we've always gone toe to toe with every single year. It's always been a been a been a game of uh, you know you know just a blue collar get after it. Uh, well coached uh, group of kids, um, you know, and, and they're sitting at two and two, kind of their backs against the wall a little bit, uh, going into this part of the uh, district. Uh, you know, it's a game that uh, we both need to win. Uh, mm-hmm. They need to win. We need to win. Um, you know, they're playing pretty well. They really are. Uh, you know, they're not giving up a lot of points. Um, and so, you know, as they've always done, they've always played really good defense. Um, so we've got to be prepared for that. I think we've got a great plan. Uh, we just got to go out and do it, and then uh, you know, offensively, um, you know, they've got uh, a kid, you know, we, we've got a kid that uh, got hurt in the Hendrickson game that's been there, kind of their guy uh, at quarterback. Uh, that uh, you know, we don't know whether we're going to see him or not, uh, but either regardless of that, you know, they do a lot of really good things that give you challenges on offense. So we've got to be tuned up and ready to go uh, and stop uh, stop what they're going to do. Uh, explosive has been the word for your offense, especially on the on the ground this season. Um, has that uh, has that helped push things through? I mean, you, you can count on those those kids, but you've also been able to spread the ball around too. As far as that goes, does that keep everybody healthy? Does that keep everybody in tune and focus on their job? What's that been like for the players and for you to, to move them? To well, it's, it's been really you know it's opportunistic you know because uh, you know Co- uh, Ryan O'Keefe and you know Marquise have done a really good job, yeah. but our guys up front have done a good job getting them open, mm-hmm. uh, getting them loose. Uh, you know, we'd like. To, I think we're going to be probably more balanced uh, throughout the rest of the course of this year. Uh, a lot of it's because you know the, the caliber of teams we're going to be playing, or hopefully, in these next couple of weeks. Well, these, these days have been a little tough to bear, and they, they're going to get a little tougher here in the next forty-eight hours. But uh, wish you the best of luck, and again, our hearts and thoughts and prayers are with the Dragons, and wish you the best of luck on Friday night. Thank you, Coach Jeff Cheatham, the Round Rock Dragons. You're listening to Dragon Football right here on the KMAX Sports Broadcast Network. We'll be right back after this. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, we all have at least one of those, you're needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com. To get started, Austin Pets Alive, helping people help pets. Along with Blake Herrera and Bruce Kipperman, up here in the stands tonight. Point toss just took place. And, uh, get that result in just a second, but uh, Ron Rock won the toss and will receive and start with the ball. Excellent. Uh, the Luling Civic Center was, I believe, overwhelmed with the population uh, of attendance and the outpouring 
think the probably the Civic Center might hold four or five hundred people, and there was well over a thousand there. Wow! And it was just uh, it was beautiful. The players got a chance to say their goodbyes, and uh, you know th- this Coach Roberts had such an impact on it, so many lives that uh, it was beautiful to see. Yeah, a lot of alum came back too, which was really cool. That he's coached over the last few years here in Round Rock. Well, so. he he played at Texas State. And he had many other, you know, this was his third coaching job. Sure. And uh, just former teammates, players, the Mainer coaching staff came as he was there before Round Rock. Mm -hmm. That's right. Just uh, the most positive man, that uh, most positive coach. So turn over to the National Anthem right now. Apologize for that. There we go. Dragons have a lot to play for today. Um, not only for the Coach Roberts and his memory and his honor, but also you know, with this district still, and we're still a lot to play for. A uh, couple of uh, last couple weeks, uh, a loss and a win, and uh, still moving forward and building upon what what they can and, sh- and need to do. So it should be a, a great game tonight. And we mentioned should be seeing a lot of things on the ground and. Uh, the rain's still coming down, and although not as hard as it was when we uh, launched, but uh, should be an interesting matchup, uh, especially Stony Point. You know, they're uh, becoming a much tougher opponent as the years go by, and their program builds too. So, I uh, I agree, and you know, Mike, not last week. I know I mentioned to Rodney, but the week of Vandergriff, I will still go to this point. There are many incredible players in 13-6A, but not one <coughs> player on offense is playing better than Marquise Brown. You are exactly right. And you put the dynamic of Marquise Brown and Ryan O'Keefe in a backfield. Yeah. Oh my we gosh. ran the Wildcat last week, and, I mean, Marquise finished with three touchdowns and 225 yards, and it's such a dynamic that there's a differentiator here tonight, and it's the ground game. And those five gentlemen up front that set the holes for Ryan and Marquise, I think, will be able to play with a lot of emotion and stay within themselves. So I look for a big win tonight, Mike. I do. Unbiased? No. Very biased. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll be in that. We get that's to be why there. I get to be in here, and uh, I am ready to go. Number 37, Ross Hines, is going to kick off for Stony Point. Oh, so we're using names tonight? <laughs> Got to keep it professional. Rod- Rodney would want that. Thanks again to Ronnie for last week. Marquise Brown and Colin Sullivan back deep. The script kick on the ground. Picked up. Oh, Jordan Smart muffed it. Someone come up behind him and saved him. Nice job by the Dragons. Heads up right there. Number two. Scoops up. That's Dylan Kine. That was number 18. Was it 18? Oh, it was, it was it Izzy? I apologize. I thought that was number two. I think, uh, eight, yeah. I think they tripped over each other, but I believe Izzy came up for that. That's why you're here, Bruce. Mop it up, brother. Mop it up. <laughs> That's why I wear glasses that uh, that work on, on occasion. Let's see what this offense comes out and does. Dragons are in the maroon top. Scray bottoms are moving from left, or excuse me, right to left out the window tonight here in the first quarter. Three receivers over to the right side. O'Keefe takes a snap, keeps himself up the middle, up across the 30-yard line. Dragons actually started back at the 26, I beg your pardon, or excuse me, 27. Up what? across the 30 to the 32, 31-yard line. Two-string tackle, Ryan O'Keefe would still be running on that first play. So, second and five. We'll pick up the start. Manageable. Izzy Morgan goes in motion. Bobble snap by O'Keefe. He's got a fall on it back at the 25. Lucky to get that. 
Slippery ball. It didn't yep. look like a bad snap, just a drop snap. Yep, just couldn't want to do something with the, with his feet before he did something with his hands, so we uh, have a second down and long now. Or excuse me, I beg your pardon, third down and 12, back to the 25. That exchange will be critical in this weather. Like to see going under center, but we don't do that. Seth Ford back in the game, back in, back in play. Good to see Seth back. Ford, a quarterback, three receivers to the right. Ford rolling out, throwing back to his left, has a receiver up at the 40. That's Colin Sullivan, makes a move. Spins around, still on his feet up at the 45 yard line. More than enough for a Dragon first down. Great pitch and catch from Seth Ford to Colin Sullivan. And a first down for the Dragons. So the happiest man in Round Rock that Seth Ford is back is number nine, Colin Sullivan. Second happiest is 33, Garrett Miller. Good to have our throwing quarterback back. That's right. It's Ford again, hands off to Marquise Brown up the middle, up across the 50 into Tiger territory to the 49 yard line. Second down and manageable. It's a 20 yard pitch and catch right there from Ford to Sullivan. That's actually a, a short completion for Seth now. Exactly, yeah, you're right. Nice touch on it. It was great to see Seth Ford back in the pocket. Good job by Colin making a move, too, and getting open like that. Two receivers up top to the right, one down to the left, two backs in the backfield. Seth Ford still at quarterback, takes a snap, takes a throw, quick throw out into the flat, tip in the air, bobbled, and almost intercepted. Wow. Colin Sullivan does come down with it, though, however. Nice job by Colin, Colin to make the, the catch as it's literally tipped two or three times in the air. Yeah, I don't know if that was, I think uh, Seth will take the completion, but either he threw it a little early or he just, the uh, ball might have slipped out of his hand. Ball all the way up to the 35-yard line, first and 10 for the Dragons, and the rain comes down hard again. Two receivers up top. Garrett Miller comes in motion from right to left. It's back on, Mike. It, it let up for a couple minutes, and there it goes again. It is raining very hard. Two backs in the backfield will keep the quarterback, takes a snap. Keeps himself this time on the left side, pushes the pile, leans, with it, puts his back into it, leans forward all the way down to the 21. Gain of three on the play. I tell you, I've had a rough week of sinus infection and strep throat. I'm glad to be back in the booth. I'm glad you're feeling better, <laughs> Mike. So I do apologize if I start to cough a little bit. You guys said you got my back, so I do appreciate that. But, uh, Oh my goodness, the rain is treacherous. Izzy Morgan takes the handoff right side, pushes the pile down across the 15, still on his feet, gets all the way down to the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal for Round Rock. Another good job by the offense line, just slowing down the field. I, uh, I got to appreciate that the referee is coming out with a towel and ready to dry the ball off between each play. So I'm sure between Ryan and Beck, uh, from center to quarterback exchange, that helps tremendously with this, this rain. Two receivers to the left, one back in the backfield with Ryan O'Keefe. Easy Morgan comes in motion. Hand off to Morgan, right side, still on his feet, gets up to the five, pushes the pile up to the four yard line, second down and goal. You know what, you know what time it is right now, Mike? Time for the Round Rock Rumble? I believe it's time for Marquise Brown to get the ball and just go head first in. I believe that's a, that's a great call right there. It's like Sam Eichenhorst just came out of the game. Looks like uh, left hand holding his left hand. So number 74 going in at uh, is that left tackle, right tackle. It's Garrett Smith. Hopefully Sam's okay. Marquise Brown, Ryan O'Keefe in the backfield snap. Hoffman coming in motion. Ball on the ground and a flag on the play. Might add some motion on the the left side over here. Let's see where if it's five or half the distance. I'd like to say they were lined up offsides. Garrett Miller is saying they are lined up offsides. We'd like to trust Garrett Miller is a truthful and honest man. That's right. Like our producer Blake Herrera. These solid round rock students. It Coach is. Win against the defense. Let's see that for Garrett Miller and Blake Herrera. Pop up for the honesty and integrity of our student body. Ball moves to the, the two yard line. Second down and goal from the two. No need for motion, boys. Hand the ball number, Marquise Brown. Already down to seven and a half. Hoffman goes in motion. He'll keep keeping it around the left side, looking to pitch. Now he'll take it himself. Touchdown, Dragons! That is a tough play to stop. Yes, it is. Ryan O'Keefe takes himself left side. Six points on the board with 7.20 to go. Nice drive. Came out of the gate with a five-minute drive. Critical here now is going to be this extra point. Can the snap be 
Can the snap be delivered? Helped by Patrick Lane and then up for a kick for back. We're about to see, Mike. But a great opening drive by that offense. Efficient and effective. Just the clock didn't stop. Four minutes, 40 seconds off the clock right there and a scoring drive by the Dragons. Ball on the ground. Lane can't handle it. No attempt there by the Dragons and it's no good. So it's 6-0 here with 7.20 to go. Your Dragons on top. You're listening to the KMAC Sports Vibe Media Network. Meet me at Rudy's. Visit one of our locations, Round Rock 2400 I-35 South, North 11570 Research Boulevard, South 2451 Capital of Texas Highway, Northwest 620 and 2222. Rudy's Barbecue is a longtime supporter of Round Rock Dragon football. The Classic Texas Burger, Arbor Walk, Breaker and Mopac, Sunset Village, Brody and 290, University Oaks, next to Ikea, 1890 Ranch, 1431 and 183A. Mighty Fun. Catch. Short kick, field it right around 20. There he goes, drops on his bottom at the 28 yard line. So Tony, Tony Point takes over, their first drive here. 7.19 to go. Ball at the 28 yard line. Again, the Dragons, at four minutes, 40 seconds. There was a, a 73 yard drive for the Dragons all the way down. They put six points on the board and they bring their defense out now. Who's playing quarterback for the 70 point tonight? I do not see a number. I will get to you in just a second. Number 16 hands off around the edge. Come around the Right side, still on his feet, up across the 40, dives forward to the 45-yard line. That was number four, Tyler Cleveland on the run. Quarterback number 16, Kyle Overton. Kyle so Overton. back in the game. So Kyle Overton, uh, we've seen frequently, uh, we can get pressure on him. You know, historically, Kyle is not the strongest quarterback mentally. He can get rattled quickly, and I'd like to see the defense get some pressure on him. Very gifted, talented quarterback. His dad was a quarterback in college and high school. So there's been a lot of hoopla around that. But uh, when you get pressure on how he responds has been suspect. Tigers moving from left to right. Hand off to Cleveland. Cleveland met immediately. No gain on the play. Nice job by the Dragon defense. That's Garrett Miller. Garrett Miller coming up on defense here. Like seeing that. Sony Point wearing white tops with their navy blue pants. Navy blue numbers. Their white helmets with the navy blue stripe. All uh, Penn State looking. Maybe we'll see the same successful Penn State play calling that we see the Stony play. Two receivers down to the right, one up top to the left. Receiver coming in motion. Snap. Overton being pressured out of the pocket, and he'll just dump it away into the sideline of Round Rock. Good pressure by the Dragon defense. Had about three or four players right after him. Nice job. Yeah, you're going to see that Kyle is not wanting to get hit, and he's going to throw the ball right away out of bounds, which is... Again, it's going to go to if we can get pressure and find the holes, this could be a, a, a good good opening series. we got third third and ten. Historically, it's been an issue for us, Mike. It has. You're absolutely Any, right. Th anything inside a country mile has been tough. <laughs> Two receivers each side. The rain has lightened up just a little bit. One back in the backfield with Overton. Takes oh, he's going forward. Come on, ref. Throw down to the side, off the sideline over to the left. It's incomplete. It'll be fourth down ten. Yeah, he would... A couple of Sony Point what wide the heck receivers. Is this guy with an L on the back of his shirt looking at when three guys are moving forward before the ball snap. I know I promised to be nice. Yeah, but that was just a blatant crappy that call. Was, that was <laughs> in your face blatant. So yeah, I, it's uh, you know do your thing, Bruce. I will. All, good. I, I, all my all my funds go back to <laughs> Vibe Sports and KMAC. Uh, waiting for my paycheck. How do I put you, Blake? <laughs> Thought I'd just go ahead and open that up. Three guys back tonight. Thank you, brother. 20 point to punt, gets it away. And over in, Dragons will let it bounce. It's going to take a Stony Point Tiger roll inside the 15. So aye, Mike, aye, aye. That's two Stony Point rolls right there. So, Mike, I'm just going to go ahead and say we had three guys back for the I punt. Can we had three guys back for the punt. Let me repeat that. We had three guys back for the punt, yet we couldn't catch the punt. I apologize, uh, number 23. The punter is not in the Stony Point roster that was given to us, so. We will refer to 23 as 23. 23. So whoever number 23's parents are, let them know that you're proud of them. Sam Eichenhorst back in the game, so that's good to see. Dragons will start at the 12-yard at the line. Looks like, yeah. 12, Thank 13. you, scoreboard. Yeah. 
Oh my goodness, a little jump in the air action there by Marquise Brown trying to hurdle the pile. And uh, he'll get no gain, it looks like, on the play, maybe one. Yeah, never going to be good when you take a hurdle like that in a pile. I'd like to see Marquise with his normal. I'm going to put my head down and run over you. Yeah, that would be better. Our first, second, and long. Two receivers over here to the left, one up top to the right, one back in the backfield. That's Brown. He'll keep takes the snap. Hands off Marquise going around That's the right a little side. Bit better. Gets up to the 20. Lowers the shoulder. Close to the 25, but more than enough for a dragon first down. Like seeing that. Good job by the uh, offense line over on the right side. That's Bolton Leifa and uh, I believe Bo Collins doing a nice job containing and uh, setting up, uh, you know, not as contained inside. Up to the 24. O'Keefe takes snap, fakes the handoff. Now going on his own, trying to get a block on the edge. Gets around Miller, spinning around. He'll be knocked for a loss. Doesn't know where to go. That's 20 point corrals him. Yeah, it looked like, again, Ryan had a problem catching the snap. Snap hit him in the gut. He just either is trying to look up and move with the ball before he catches it or not sure. But uh, just watch the ball into your hands, Ryan, and then, then go ahead and do your thing. They're going to say no gain on the play. It'll be second and 10 now for Round Rock up at the 24-yard line. Clock down to 439 here in the first quarter. Again, your Dragons leading 6 to nothing. Three receivers up top to the right, one down to the left. Izzy Morgan comes in motion. O'Keefe keeps it. Around the left side, up across the 25, to about the 27 or 28. We'll see where they spot it. Third and manage. How about how about the 29? Looks like all right. Five yards on the carry. I'm all right with these five yards at a time. It's, this is a big third down to convert Seth Ford back in the game. I'd like to keep chewing the clock up and keep the ball in our hands. Pro said as there's three receivers over to the right, and two down to the left. Ford Ballard by himself takes snap, drops back to throw, looking to throw, pump fakes, now he's going to spin around and he's going to lose the football. Ball's loose on the ground, but he's going to say he was down by contact all the way back to the 20-yard there's line. There's some laundry down. I'm check, wondering if that's a uh, face mask, uh, horse collar against Seth, or they're going to call I don't. I didn't see a hold. I didn't either. I think that was face mask as they went to tackle Seth. That would be advantageous to say the least. Tough break because Seth had, had some time, but then he had to pull it down and move out of the pocket. Let's see what the ref's call is. Personal foul. Hands in the face against right, the so Stony Point the Tigers. So it's an automatic first down. So we don't know what's being said down there on the line, but again, it's a mental game as well as a physical game. And when you move down the field and you've got a running game as effective as Ron Rocks, I'm guessing there might be some chippiness going on. I've talked to my oldest son who did this once before. You, Mike, you and I have done that. There's probably some fun talk going down there. Oh, sure. Ball moves to the 44-yard line. Brown comes in motion. Throw out into the flat to the right side. In and out of the hands of Garrett Miller. Incomplete. Be second down and 10. Good play call right there. Just a tough throw. And it, thankfully, the rain is looks like it's now misting more than raining. So that's kind of a good sign, too. I'll take your word for it. There's still some umbrellas up. but Right. Well, I don't think people want to sit in the mist any more than the rain. But just looking over at the, the lights across the way. It's a more of a gentle. Can I, can I quote you on that one? That gentle rainfall. The the rain? Yeah. I wouldn't want to sit in either of them. So God bless these fans. That's for sure. Two Absolutely. receivers up top to the right. One down to the left. Two backs in the backfield. Forward. Quick throw out to the right. Caught by Miller. Miller up to the 45. By Ryan Jumps over the pile. Hurdles. Lands at the 50. And he'll be marked down at the 49. That was string tackle by number one. Little wow. fumble by number one. I don't have a two depth chart that Sony Point provided me. <laughs> my uh, my Minnesota family and friends who are listening in, who are listening in, or are well versed in the passive aggressive qualities of life, would sure be proud of that comment. That's why, for sure. Why would you call it passive aggressive? <laughs> <laughs> Third and short. Let's go, Ron Rock. Two receivers up top to the right. We'll keep it quarterback to keep himself going to the left side. Trying to get the edge at the 45, spin around, tackle down at the 40-yard line. The mark him at the 41. First down for the Dragons. That is a uh, three guys running after one really fast athletic quarterback. You're not going to catch him. Yeah, it's okay. 
you right, he's super fast, but when you put in the moves that Ryan O'Keefe has, the spin, the, the hurdle. I'm just saying, the that was a sweep that yeah. three guys from the middle were going to... Ryan knew he had a first down. No, I know. I'm just saying that's beautiful because they're going after this kid who's got two more moves in him Absolutely. before he's going down, which is phenomenal. And once he starts doing the run pass option to the run, just like this, it's it's 10 yards. Morgan goes in motion, gets the handoff, cuts back to the left side, gets it up across the 35, down to the 33-yard line, second down and short for the Dragons. The defense has to pick an option because they're so athletic on Ron Rock offense that if they guess wrong, it's 10 yards. Yep. Oh, and my, the mist, by the way, is now a heavy it, rain It's back to rain again. So I, I don't think people want to sit in rain as much as they want to sit in mist. They either. don't. They don't want to sit mist or twist or spin, anything of the sort. O'Keefe takes the snap, hands off to Ryan or Marquise Brown. I beg your pardon. Actually, it's Izzy that Morgan. Easy Morgan again. gets up across the 30 down to the 29, but they'll mark him at the 31 right at the first down marker. I'll tell you what, Marquise Brown is being used as a decoy right now. Yes, he now. is. You Why know not? That, that means a healthy and very ready-to-go second half for Marquise Brown, and I am a huge fan of that. Two-yard run by Izzy Morgan makes it first and 10 for Round Rock at the 31. Down to two minutes, actually two oh one to go here in quarter number one. Dragons on top, six to nothing. Clock should get moving again. Yep, there it goes. Under two minutes now. I two, like this. Two receivers to the right, one down here to the left. That's Solomon by himself. Two backs in the backfield. Izzy Morgan and Marquise Brown back there. Ryan O'Keefe, the quarterback, takes a snap. He's gonna go himself around the right side, cuts back to the middle, up across the twenty, down close to the fifteen yard line. They'll mark him at the the 17th and another first down for Round Rock. Wow. Another 14 yards on that carry. The best thing about this offense and the clock continuing to run here, Mike, is Stony Point's offense isn't on the field. Wildcat. Wildcat and Marquise. Marquise goes on the right side, lowers his shoulder, gets up across the 15 down to the 14 yard line and makes that the 13, a gain of four on the play. But you know what I mean? So our best offense is, our best defense is our offense being on the field. Yeah, absolutely. That's the Coach Cheatham alluded to that, too, in his interview last few weeks. His time management, clock management, need to, you know, keep that ball a little bit longer than they have. They're explosive, but to, to chip a little bit at the clock as well as, uh, as the field helps a lot. Morgan comes in motion from left to right to the backfield. Snap to O'Keefe. O'Keefe lowers his shoulder, still on his feet, gets across the 10, down to the 5-yard line. It'll be first and goal for Round Rock at the 5-yard line. Make that the 6. Who is that leading? Bo Collins just, just led the way. Beck and Bo Collins created a hole for Ryan just to follow. That was great offensive line work right there. See, they do spot at the five after all. High snap. Oh, high snap. Marquise Brown takes himself over the okay, shoulder. Good. Touchdown, Dragons. There goes the Wildcat, Marquise. And who did he roll up under? Hopefully, Bo Collins gets up. Bo Collins is okay. And is there laundry in the field? No, it doesn't look like it. No, they're just waiting for, uh, just waiting for the two-point play, two two point two play. Point signal. They're not going to test that long snap anymore. Why would you when you're gaining 17 yards of play when you want? Again, Marquise Brown, a big part of Marquise Brown with a five-yard touchdown run for the Dragons. Ryan O'Keefe, a quarterback, two receivers up top to the right. Colin Sullivan down here to the left. They're going to go for two. O'Keefe takes the snap. Pitch over to Morgan. Morgan oh. drops it on the ground. It'll be no good. Morgan wanted to take off running before he got the ball in his hands. It'll be 12 nothing with 54 seconds to go. Your Dragons on top. You're listening to Round Rock Dragon Football on the KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. PNB Print is a proud sponsor of Dragon Football. Turn to PNB for all your printing needs from invitations and business cards to mailing and promotional products. Visit us at pnbprint.com or you can call 512-255-5510. Again, that's 512-255-5510. Go Dragons! Soapbox Car Wash is happy to sponsor Round Rock Dragon Football. We're open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily and located on Round Rock Avenue between Oakwood Boulevard and Oaklands Drive, close to Round Rock High School. Drive on in and get cleaned up with us. Go Rock! So, Mike, we did this a little bit last week where once, you know, we had an extra point that got blocked. It was a unique uh, snap and hold combo. And Coach Cheatham went for two until he got back onto his seven point kind of per touchdown oh, sure. regime. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't know about the snap and hold process right now. There's some barriers of it needing to be improved. Okay. But one point generally is easy. 
there's two points. If you only score, if you score and get six at a time and don't get the extra points, you're just let it, you're, you're making it easier for the other team to catch up. That's right, yeah. You, you leaving that back door open, as it were. That's for sure. Back Kipperman to, kip, to kick it off. A squibber on the ground this time. Fielded at the 30, up to the 35. Lowers his shoulder, gets up close to the 40. Only marked down at the 39-yard line. A little heads-up run there for Stony Point, and they have good field position to start their second series with 55-0 seconds to go here in the first quarter. It's raining. I like the idea of just putting the ball as high as you can, as deep as you can, and make the kid catch it and run. That's We've all not a, done that yet. That's all a Hollywood right there. I love that. In the rain, he's got to have the, the plastic shield, though, the tinted that's, one. That's a good point. Yep. Over tinted quarterback. Runner comes in motion, takes the snap, pulls back. Ball's on the ground. It's up for grabs. Is that Dragon Ball? It looks like Dragon's landed on top of it, but there's a big pile up to un unearth it. And, and the Dragons do have it. And guess who's in Kyle Overton's face? Garrett Miller. Nice. Don't know what's going to happen to Kyle Overton for a couple reasons. A, he lives in Round Rock territory, or he used to. Right. He didn't go to any of the schools that Blake Herrera grew up going, even though he lived right across the street from Blake Herrera. And he knows these kids, and they're going to get into his face as much as they can. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the psychological warfare and the wow. emotion they've got going on right now. Round Rock with the football, and it is at their own 37, excuse me, a big part at Sony Point's 37-yard line. Let's put one in here, uh, Mike, and we'll if we're going <laughs> to only go six at a time, let's get up 18 to nothing. Why not, huh? Again. Multiples of six, as long as you get them more than uh, the other team's getting seven. Snap to O'Keefe. He's going to take it himself. Good Drop the middle. The 30 line. to 25. Hurdles the pile. Lands on his chest at the 21-yard line. First and 10 for the Dragons. The offense line is now just, I think, looks like they're just controlling this. Mike. Another 16 yard run right there for O'Keefe. It was a five, wa five yard wide hole for him to run through. Oh, it was, yes, absolutely beautiful. Marquise Brown went in motion on that, pulled everybody to the side and opened up that big hole. These def this defense has got to be tired. They've been on the field 12 straight minutes. Snap to O'Keefe, handoff Brown. Brown up the middle. Up across the 20, down to the 18-yard line, four yards. Beg your pardon, three yards on the kick. That'll be the first play of the last play of the first quarter. Stony Point Tigers breathe a sigh of relief as the clock winds down to zero here. End of first quarter. Your Dragons on top, 12 to nothing. Heck of a first quarter for Round Rock, and we look forward to uh, them driving. We'll come back in the second quarter where they'll be at the 18-yard line, You're listening to Dragon football. You're listening to Round Rock Dragon Football on the KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. Realtor Jen Griffith at Southern Roots Realty Group is on a mission to service her clients every real estate need, no matter how big or small, while building lifetime client relationships. Buying, selling, leasing, or investing. She and her team are here to help you through it all. Call her at 512-970-5130. That's 512-970-5130. Go Rock Football. Who feeds the Dragons? Fabulous Affairs Catering feeds the dragons, and we can feed your crew, too. Call us at 512-653-5237 to help us prepare for your next event. R-O-C-K. Go Dragons. Gorsby Gym. You want results? That's what we say, and that's what we do. Central Texas Speed and Strength Training Headquarters since 2004. Proudly supporting Round Rock Dragon Football. Thank you, sir. Well done. Thank you to our sponsors and to the Booster Club for making this broadcast possible. How about that uh, dragon wagon today with some oh my heavens, shrimp and crawfish etouffee. Oh, and Mr. Herrera, could you please give a shout out to our QA this evening? I absolutely, Mr. Brendan McCoughlin. Thank you, Mr. Brendan McCoughlin, for being with us tonight. Appreciate you. I neglected to include you in our lineup this evening. I do apologize, but I appreciate you being here. Second quarter underway. It was a gain of four on a keeper up the middle. We got Wildcat going. Snap directly to Marquise Brown there up the middle. Marquise. Across the 15, lowers his shoulder down inside the five. We'll see where they mark him at the four yard line. First and goal for the Dragons. Right back to the line of scrimmage. 10 yards on the carry. Back to the Wildcat again. Snap to Brown. Brown can take himself to the left side this time. Lowers his shoulder. Touchdown, Dragons. How about that? There it is. Finally get the signal, but it was pretty obvious as Marquise rolled over the top of that pile across the. How about we kick an extra point? Looks like that's what they're going to do as Lane comes out on the field. 
A little bit drier now. Not as uh, <laughs> not as uh, pouring aggressively. The rock flags, the ROCK flags, are drenched. Those poor people had to do some weightlifting before they picked them up to run. Kipperman for the kick. It'd be fun if Beck went to the other side just for kicks and giggles. High snap, kick is up, and, and it is right down good. The 19 to nothing is the score. Left footed boom. Back to you, Blake. You're listening to Round Rock Dragon Football on the KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. Ted Heaton and his team at State Farm Insurance say it's game time, so let's go, Round Rock Dragons. On or off the field, Ted Heaton and his team are always here to help support the players, coaches, fans, and the parents. Good luck and go, Dragons. John Martin and the guys at Motorman Garage say, pedal to the metal, Round Rock Dragons. And when you need a pit stop, bring your car or truck to the Motorman Garage at 1520 Sam Bass Road in Round Rock or call 512-804-0483 for an appointment. Again, that's 512-804-0423 for an appointment. Go Dragons. Hey, Blake, do we need to prioritize that one poor uh, ad that had to get uh, sped up three different times? Yeah, that's, that's the next Dr. Blair, R.R. R. Blair Arnett, whatever. Yeah, Blair R. Barnett, yeah. There we go. <laughs> I felt you, so bad for you. <laughs> You're such a trooper, Blake. I love it. Dragons leading 19 nothing. 11-27 to go. Back Kipperman's going to kick it off. Back to Sony Point. And again, second quarter here as they switch sides. Squibber on the ground. Big hop right at the 25. Picked up. Still on his feet to the 30, 35, making his way to the edge to the 40, still making the move to cross midfield. Great return here by Stony Point. He steps out of bounds across the 40 into Dragon Territory down to the 39 yard line. Wow. I'm mystified or demystified. I'd like to demystify the process of kick the ball deep. Yeah, let, let him fair catch it and put it at the 25. <laughs> Looks like there was a... Uh, an individual that might miss a tackle that's getting uh, a question from Coach Cheatham. But I don't like the ball starting on this side of the field. And you can put them back on the 25, put them back on the 25. Exactly. Especially with what you've done so far to this defense, or this offense. Overton, back Take snap, snap. bobbles a snap, runs into his own players. He can get trapped from behind Garrett Miller <laughs> and a few other people right there to bring him to his backside. And Overton's helmet flies off, and he is yelling and we got some flags in the air as we got some excessive celebration going on we'll see what no, he happened the Overton was mad I don't think it was excessive celebration someone did something to Garrett and Garrett went and retaliated so hopefully this is offsetting but we're going to see it's definitely off putting <laughs> sorry I couldn't help <laughs> make a great play like that this is what we talked about at the beginning of the game you have to play within your emotions it was a great defensive play Get up and move back. If you want to get in Calverton's head, you've just done it. You tore his helmet off. Yep. You got him for an 18-yard loss. Get the hell back on the other side of the field. Do it again. Whisper in his ear, I'll see you next play. Yep. Exactly. And go back. Yeah, and this is like Michael Sin Mike Singletary said back in the 80s. I'll be here all night, baby. It's my kind of party. Looks like they're going. It's Are it's they giving it to Stony Point? It's against Stony Point. Backing them up even more. All right. Yep. Well, either way, Garrett Miller's got to control himself because yes, that does. very easily could have gone against him. You know what I mean? You're exactly right. The ball was at the Dragon 39. This is more than a country mile. I don't mean to interrupt you, Mike. Holy cow. It's back to the Stony Point 34. So now I don't feel as bad as where they started. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Coach Cheatham knew it all along, kids. And Kyle Overton is out of the game. He, if your helmet comes off, you're out for I, one. Yeah, play, but yeah. I think we forced it off. I don't think that was... Any other fake snap, quick throw across the middle, incomplete. We'll see if he comes back in right here. Number 12, Jackson Tingler, the quarterback in here for Overton on this play at least. Looks like Overton staying over there on the sideline with his helmet off. Yep, he's Tingler will stay in. Tingler did a, a decent job last week against Hendrickson after getting knocked out of the game. Or who, uh, whomever it was, it wasn't Hendrickson. Mr. Ridge maybe, but he did a good job leading the team. So he's he's a dangerous quarterback as well. Tingler takes snap, looking to throw again. Pressured out of the pocket, rolling to his right, throws off his back foot. Good defense, Mike. Titus Dunk comes over the Titus end. Dunk. Knocks it away. Great defense right there by the Dragons. Third and ten. Mike, it's more than 53 now, but um, this defense right. is in Stony Point's head. 
the emotion is being contained. Now we just have to continue playing our game on offense. Get another five yard, five minute drive going on. How how great would it be to go into halftime up with a zero on the other side of the scoreboard? Wow. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. It's, I was going to say the scoreboard needs to change or something. No, it's still fourth and thirty-seven. No, it was. They had a second down on the scoreboard. Now it's fourth down. Fourth and thirty-seven. Still obviously punt again. Number twenty-three, the unknown punter in the game, gets it away. I'll get his name here in just a second. Takes a Stony Point roll. No, that's a, a dragon roll. I think. Dragon roll. Beg your Why are we going to pick it up? Close to midfield. Yeah, get away from that, kids. It's not live ball. It's a kickoff. It's a punt. When the other kid touches it, it's down. It shouldn't even be their ball. Yeah, I don't know what they're hopping off. Why? It's Stony Point's football, guys. I thought the ball is down when the other team touches it. So they touched it. It's down. Or did we touch it first? It must have, we must have touched it. So, okay. Well, that go well, it's not even back to the original line of scrimmage, but again, another punt debacle. This team has got to figure out how to do special teams, like punt specifically. Punt return and kick return has been just embarrassing all year. Ball at the 47 of Rondrock handoff up the middle, still on his feet, pushing the pile up across the 45 down to the 44-yard line. And Overton still sitting on the bench talking to the coach. Kingler's still in. I guess it's still his drive. I'm still perplexed at how, when we don't touch a punt, catch a punt, we still give it up. That just it must have touched somebody. That's well, no, I'm just saying, if we're not going to catch it, then don't touch it. Right. Snap Tingler handoff up the middle. He met immediately. Cleveland is there. A whole host of Dragons coming, knocking him backwards. Purdue's Back got to be ecstatic to see Garrett Miller playing like this on defense. It does open up a whole new ball of wax for the Purdue Boilermakers, who, who, sees who, who Garrett's committed to, that's for sure. Third down and 10 now for Stony Point. I didn't mean to interrupt you there, Mike. Sorry. That's okay. Two receivers up top to the right, one down, two down to the left. I beg your pardon. One back in the backfield. Tingler takes a snap, looking to throw here. Blitz up the middle, and he's going to be brought down. Ha ha. 46 for Round Rock. Matthew Bentley. Bentley came through untouched. Well, knocked him on his keister. Fourth down. That becomes that number 23. That. Poor punt recovery uh, did not do any damage there, so we'll take advantage of it and get the ball back. All right, looks like fourth and 16, fourth and seven, yeah, 16, 17. Jaden Victorian is the punter. He does get it away. Good job, pressure there by the Dragons, and now get out of the way, gentlemen, as the ball hits and bounces out of bounds on the Sony Point sideline. Rain coming back down hard again. 8.54 to go here in the first half. The Dragons on top, 19 to nothing. I'll get the ball right now. You're listening to Round Rock Dragon Football on the KMAX Sports Vite Media Network. Henry Hui Photography is a longtime supporter of the Dragons. Sports photos, band photos, graduation photos, and more. Henry Hui Photography does it all. Find them on Twitter at Henry Hui Photo. Go Rock! Discount Electronics is Round Rock's half price computer superstore with laptops from $149. Discount Electronics will buy your unwanted computers, laptops, and monitors. They're open seven days a week. Visit the store or go online at discountelectronics.com. Go Rock! So it looks like we were, Round Rock was offsides, and it looks like Stony Point has declined the five yards, uh, and Round Rock will get the ball. I'm under. Not, I'm not questioning why the penalty, but I'm questioning why you would decline it when you can kick it again back to our team uh, to give us a chance to touch it and, and go backwards with it. But I'll take it. First and ten, Rob. Two backs in the backfield. Two receivers over here to the right. O'Keefe takes himself, bounces up to the left side, still on his feet, up across the 35, still on his feet, up across the 40, down to the 44. Make that the 43, and it's a first down for Round Rock. And let the clock go. And here's on the carry. Reina's picked back up again, as you alluded, Mike. 
He backs in the backfield handoff. Brown, Brown across the 45. Close to midfield. It'll be marked down at the 47. Make that the 48-yard line. Five-yard gain. Second and five. Dragons not wasting much time. Down to 8.25 to go here in the second quarter. Again, Dragons leading 19 to nothing. All, all scores on the ground. Ryan O'Keefe started things off. And Marquise Brown added two more. Nice and methodical drives. Three receivers to the right. Bobbled snap. O'Keefe dives on top of it. Thank goodness. Back to the third, 41, I beg your pardon. Again, not, it's just uh, unfortunate. The snaps are on, on line there. Glad that Ryan was able to jump on it, but I was just about to say, big difference between how Stony Point's been able to get the, the battery connection between center and quarterback. We've not had an issue. We've had a couple that Ryan has dropped, but nothing that has been detrimental. And now we've got our first <laughs> our first third and long here, Mike. It is third down and 12, back to the 41-yard line. Two receivers up top to the left, three down to the right, empty backfield for O'Keefe. Fakes the throw. Takes off running. Great right block by Beck Hipperman. To the 40, to the 30, to 20, 10. Touchdown, Round Rock. Wow, nice job. Not only a great play call, but I don't know if you saw him like that. Beck had a block there that just, it, it was probably one of the better blocks of the season, but it just sealed two gentlemen and gave Ryan the entire lane to go. And third and long converted to six points. 59-yard touchdown run by Round Rock. And they'll, uh, extra point coming on. Are we still? I think, yeah, we're okay. Just our, uh, our crowd might probably got a little too wet out there. Okay. So Blake's going to take care of that. We might not have a crowd sound here. Extra point by Kipperman. Kick is up. It is good. Left-footed boom. 25. Make that 26. Nothing. I beg your pardon. Another nice drive put together by Ron Rock, Mike. 7.22 left in the first half. 26 Round Rock, zero Stony Point. And uh, more, in my opinion, more importantly, a Stony Point offense that is completely uh, uh, in disarray. Oh, absolutely. And a defense that is just building momentum. A and this is what we look for tonight, right, was the emotion being contained uh -huh. and being on the ground. We've done everything as needed and as scripted. Been really very much impressed with these boys tonight. Absolutely. It's it, yeah. What a testament to to them. Look uh, at the amount of water on this poor lady's umbrella. You just did you miss her splash I it off? No, that I was a good I inch of water. It was. It's kudos to these Round Rock Dragons and uh, Kirby Lane and other restaurants that are open late. You better get <laughs> some chicken soup all ready to go if you're listening. I'm sorry. It's not a lady. It's a man. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Hopefully you're one of our 12 listeners <laughs> tonight, and we appreciate you for that. That's why he just scowled at you and turned around. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Bruce. I'm sorry. <laughs> Again, send your letters <laughs> to Bruce Kipperman. Care of at Kipper Daddy <laughs> on Twitter. All right, let's see what Beck Kipperman does on this kickoff. Well, hopefully, yeah. It'd be nice to see something a little bit more with in the air? on it. In the air or deeper would be good. Another scrub not. kick on the ground, picked up at the 30-yard line. A couple blockers in front of him, lowers his shoulder up across the 35. And momentum. Maybe it's the intent of we just want to go hit someone hard. And that could be. 7.16 to go. Stony Point has the football at their 37-yard line. see uh, Kyle Overton back in the game coming out as the rain falls harder and harder. Oh yeah, yeah. His uh, his his function and, and uh, the ask of him becomes bigger and bigger. Two backs in the backfield. Runner comes in motion from left to right. High snap. He bobbles it. Picks it up. Now he's on his feet. Up across the forty. Gets tackled from behind up at the forty-five yard line. Good run by Overton after <laughs> bobbling that snap. Garrett Miller has. Number 16 in his vision all night long. Listen, your job is to... <laughs> you, you're zoning in on Kyle Overton only, Garrett. Keep hitting him and keep hitting him hard. Eight yards on the carry up to the 45-yard line. Second down and two for Stony Point. We all right, Blake? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, it's just... Uh, Thank you for jumping on that. Apologize. High snap to Overton. Snap. Taps it to himself. 
I'm in my I'm mad. I almost caught the snap. He did. Cleveland was there to, to take the tip in the air and try to run with it, but he's knocked back all the way back to the 39 yard line. It'll be third down and then. From a second and one to eight. a third and eight. Third and seven, third and eight. This defense has a heck of a lot more fun when they're only on the field three plays at a time, Mike. It's, it's very true. It can, it can do a lot of damage when you don't have to be out there very long. And I'll tell you, you can see the, the snap the snap to quarterback combo is much different between the two schools. Cows had three bad. That was his only first Correct. good snap in a while. Throw across the middle, tipped in the air. Ooh, Ashton Miller's had his hands on that one. Couldn't hang on to it, but a good good defense right there. Brings that fourth down for Stony Point. Got to think the rain might have had an impact on that for both Kyle and Ashton, but that throw looked like it was to Ashton, it not to his own team. That's very true. All right, so here we go with the wild world of a punt. Dalton Kime and Izzy Morgan back deep to receive the punt from Victorian. Thank you to the coaching staff of Stony Point to help me out with the name. Appreciate that. That was very uh, adult-like of you to go get the name right. Oh, got to... Gotta do what you gotta do. They're gonna let this one fall at the 30 and let it roll inside the 25. Takes the dragon hop at the 25 and that's where they'll spot it down. It's kind of funny to watch two kids look at each other with the ball land. As right the ball go right down the middle <laughs> of the field. All right, 26 nothing, 5.53 left in the first half. So I gotta I'll tell you a quick story as we talked about Garrett Miller tonight, Mike. We've, we've got uh, got to go to a convention this week and Peyton Manning was the keynote speaker. <laughs> we got a <laughs> woolly <laughs> mammoth in front of us. <laughs> Talk about one Miller and, and another Miller's pounding on the glass. So well, I'll, 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 I'll tell you the story after the, the drive. Two, two backs in the backfield, two receivers down here to the right, one up top to the left, snap to O'Keefe, hand off to Brown. Brown met by a host of Tigers and he'll be stopped for no gain. So Peyton Manning was a public a speaker at a convention I was at, and they he was speak you know it was a technology convention. And he was asked, "Who's the person that you hated playing against most?" And he immediately said, "Ray Lewis by far." And so they said, "Why was it?" And they said, "When Ray Lewis, first of all, I got thrown down and sacked more by Ray Lewis than anyone else. But when Ray Lewis was in his prime, he would use me to help himself get up. But he would say into my ear hole, "I will see you in four seconds," knowing that he was going to be back in Peyton Manning's kitchen." That's what Garrett Miller is doing right now. And that's why I said earlier, he should just be whispering to Kyle Littleton, I will see you very soon. <laughs> O'Keefe kept that one himself two yards on the carry. It'll be third down and eight for the, the Dragons up to the 28-yard line. Third and seven. Last third and long we saw ended up in a 45-yard touchdown run. How long was Ryan O'Keefe's last touchdown run? 59 yards. Sorry, 59 yards. This would be a 72-yarder. Uh, Seth Ford, a quarterback, however, <laughs> takes a snap, hand off up the middle. That's Izzy Morgan spinning around. No gain on the play. It'll be fourth down, and Dragons will give this one back. I don't stop going with what's working, Mike. That's right. No need to take your foot off the gas now. No need to. I, a 33 to nothing lead, I think, is better than a 26 to nothing lead. You can quote me on that one. Are they going for it, or is Seth Ford going to do a pooch punt? Oh, oh, look at that. we got a flag Back on the play. Back snap the ball because the kid was off sides. Ball Zeus, Marquise That's Brown fine. makes the tackle. Kid's off sides, five yards from, from good play by Beck. It was. Good heads up by the center back. Seth wasn't, Seth wasn't ready, so I'm sure he's not very happy with Beck. But uh, you get the five yards and you go. That's the way the center is caught. Well, they have a washcloth literally over the top of the football. That's it's handy. Nothing is more demoralizing than not only getting you, you know, run up and down the field, but in a fourth and long to go off sides and then get called for it. And then the other team to recover a fumble because the quarterback wasn't ready to get that negated. Yeah. So now so we've got fourth and fourth one. Fourth and seven be fourth and two now. Yep. Now you go for it. Good snap, good catch, and just run up the middle. Two receivers down to the right, one up top to the left, one back in the backfield. Lift Seth Ford. Oh, now they're going to punt. Drop back to punt this time. Snap to the up guy. Nope. He'll pooch it away. Good, good punt. punt by Seth. Very good punt. Takes a drag and roll inside the 15, still on its way inside the 10, and out of bounds. We'll see where they spot it at the nine yard line. 
3.56 to go. Dragons on top here in the second quarter. 26 0. 20 point will have the ball. You're listening to Round Rock Dragon Football on the KMAC Sports Vibe Media Network. Dragon parents know there's only one orthodontist for their dragons, and that's Dr. Blair R. Barnett at Avery Orthodontics. Call 512 260 084. That's 512 260 084. Or you can visit his website at www.averyortho.com for an appointment. Go Dragons! So this will be the deepest that we've seen Stony Point pinned all night. See what they can do with a very risky center quarterback exchange, Mike. Overton is that quarterback. Runner comes in motion. Snap right into the belly. Handoff coming around the edge now. Oh, bad angle. Back. Up to the 15 to the 20, 25, 30. Still on his feet. Pushed out of bounds. Ex all the way up across the 35, close to the 40-yard line for 38. Huge run right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that. It was number, yeah, it was uh, Keegan, I think, would want that one back as he took a very, very uh, opportunistic angle at the running back right there. Led him around the corner, and that was 30 yards down the road. A 30-yard run there by Kendall Thomas. Oh, good pursuit by the Dragons. Brought him down. That's Gary Miller throwing his hands in the air like a rodeo bullfighter right there. You see the water pop off the field? I it did. is holding some Holy cats, it is coming down like cats and dogs. Kendall Thomas again on the carry. Loses some of his... Uh, if some of that 30-yard gain. 30-yard average, yep. Mike, I don't think my wife is very happy that I'm in the booth tonight. Oh. I'm sorry, Mrs. Kipperman, but that, I'm... That's I'm why I get paid zero. We're, we're glad you're here. It's a heck of a lot of fun when you're up here with us. Runner comes in motion. It's third. Received a second down and long. Over that the was a wildcat. No, that was oh, a wildcat. Oh, bigger part than it is. It's right. It's oh. Kendall with it. Up across. <laughs> Good pursuit by the rest of the defense. Number, yes. Is that number 14? That uh, Jordan Smart got a yep. little bit of a move. And he's too fast to get outrun as well. So great recovery by the swarm of Round Rock Dragons pursuing it to make a third and uh, third and long again. We do have a visitor in the booth, Mike. Let's, we're we're going to call is. out young Wick Kipperman in the booth with us, as his mother might not be happy that his father is in the booth, but I, I wanted Wit in the booth with us tonight. Yeah. Welcome welcome aboard, Wit. That a boy. Glad you're here, too, man. Two receivers to each side, one back in the backfield. we got a false start right there, ref. Yeah. He's not going to no, call it. No, he's not going to call it. Overton takes off running. Tackle from behind and by ball Gary down. Like Mr. Garrett Miller. No, ball down. Kyle oh. Overton fumbled again. Miller... Slow to get up, however. That's not a good sign. Yeah. Wild but, but the Dragon Dragons ball. Take over. That's awesome. Garrett Miller caused the fumble. Ashton Miller's recovered. I got to tell you, we don't normally see uh, a gentleman who gets player of the week accolades as a tight end. He's going to be player of the week as the defensive end as well tonight. That is just Garrett Miller is a madman tonight. Dragons yep. take over. I'm scared to say otherwise as his dad is hunting us right outside yeah, the, uh, the window. Dragons take over at the 41-yard line of Stony Point. Going around oh. the right side. Shoelace tackle there. Got to believe that Marquise was a little bit of it was wet out, and Marquise just got slipped up a little bit because normally that is one that Marquise does not come down on. Seth Ford comes in at quarterback. Trevor Waz steps off the field. Oh, Keith was going to spread out wide. It's going to be a quick screen and Ryan for to the to the races. Who spread out wide as well with with O'Keefe over there to the left. One on one coverage. Seth Ford's got the arm. I can see this going to Ryan O'Keefe and one on one. I like Ryan's chances. Can we get the ball back to Seth and the ball from Seth to Ryan quickly? Two backs in the backfield. Takes the handoff. Quick throw. Sullivan into the mm. flat. Incomplete on the slant. Mm mm mm. Tough call will be third down and nine. Or excuse me, eight, I beg your pardon. Third down and eight at the 39. Th that was open as well. I wonder if the rain had something to do with Ryan with Collins' react response time. I'm not sure. But Seth threw the ball quite quickly right there. In tight traffic. And off comes Ford and back in goes O'Keefe for third and third third and long. What do you think here, Mike? Run up the middle? O'Keefe just let him go, or are we going to throw? 
I think we've got it's a good spread right there. It looks like people going in motion. O'Keefe's going to take the snap, and he's going to take off running, trying to get the edge. He does up to the 35, to the 30, makes it <laughs> 25. Down the side, to the 10, cuts back inside the 5. He's tackled at the 1 yard line. The ball may have come loose, but they're going to say he's down at the 1. <laughs> did you see that move, Mike? I certainly did. I think the kid from Stony Point is still looking for Ryan O'Keefe. Holy cats. A 38-yard run down to the one-yard line is first and goal for So we the found Dragons. out the answer there was let Ryan run, Let Mike. Ryan run, yeah. <laughs> Everybody started to spread out. I figured maybe something was, a trickeration was about to take place, but no need for that when Ryan O'Keefe can make, who has, as my dad would say, more moves than a bowl of jello. I like it. I'm a fan here. Of let's throw the ball up to let Garrett Miller catch it. Well, cat. Marquise Brown lowers his shoulder, spins, pushes backwards, and, and they're going to say he get he's in? down. What does that ref know? <laughs> going to say he's down inside the one-yard line. Be second and goal for the Dragons. Timeout called. On the field by Round Rock. 45 seconds to go. It'll be second down and goal at the two, or excuse me, the one-yard line. You're listening to Round Rock Dragon Football on the KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. Music Family Motors is a proud sponsor of Dragon Football. If it's time for your first car or truck or you just need another one, then stop by and see Mike at Music Family Motors and he and his family will take great care of you. Call 512-358-6975. Again, that's 512-358-6975. Or go to musicfamilymotors.com. That's M-U-S-I-C-K familymotors.com Go Dragons! Wagabag is proud to be your hometown convenience store. We've been serving the communities of Round Rock, Georgetown, Pflugerville, Hutto, Liberty Hill, and Austin since 1964. Go Rock! Go Dragons! The nose of the ball touching the one yard line <coughs> on the back side, so with less than a foot to go for the Dragons. So Mike, when I was playing, if I had someone on defense that was playing like Garrett, it's almost like you want to give him the right behavior, but direct snap to Brown, looking for the signal as he leans yep. forward. The quarterback and touchdown, Dragons. Marquise Brown with his third rushing touchdown of the evening with 38 seconds to go. So, oh. so, so much for that theory of reward, <laughs> reward Garrett. But when you're six foot nine, uh oh, someone's down. Ay ay ay. A lot of people around oh, can't up see now. who it is. They're standing up on their own, but not feeling too hot. May have got the wind knocked out of them, it looks like. Looks like it was either Izzy or Marquise. And it's not Marquise because I see Marquise right there. So Izzy, I'm looking for number 18. I'm looking for number 4. There's O'Keefe on the outside by Marquise. All right, so... so is he? Is it it's Izzy? Yeah, it's Izzy. Izzy Morgan shook up on the play. He's going to be helped off the field by a couple of trainers. It's going to start getting snippy on the Stony Point side when you're getting your uh, your rear ends handed to you like this, with 38 seconds left in the half, down soon to be 33 to nothing. It's going to get dirty. It's going to get chippy, and these guys don't have any uh, any real cause for not pulling out all the dirty tricks that you'd expect potentially from a rivalry like this, Mike. A poncho-laden rock band ready to come on the field for halftime. Beck Epperman for the extra point. Snap, kick is up, and it is good. Left foot a boom. 33-0 the score. That's what Bruce asked for. That's what Bruce gets. 38 seconds to go here in the first half. Dragons with a 33-0 lead. You're listening to Round Rock Dragon Football on the KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. Rock Sports has been in business for over 15 years with an experienced staff providing unmatched screen printing and embroidery services. For a personal touch, give Rock Sports a call at 512-218-9913. Again, that's 512-218-9913. Or you can visit one of our retail locations. Go Rock! We'd like to take the time to recognize the 2018-2019 Round Rock Football Booster Club officers. They do a wonderful job supporting our team, coaches, community, and high school. President Michelle Carson, Vice President Randall Ford, Treasurer Sarah Eichenhorst, Sar Secretary Leslie Espinola, Parliamentarian Mike Calvo, and Member-at-Large Ron Sullivan. The Football Booster Club meets every Monday at 6.30 p.m. in the Dragon's Lair. All parents and fans of the Round Rock Dragon Varsity, JV, and freshman football teams are welcome and encouraged to get involved. Go Dragons! It's one of my favorite things to do is to come and check out the Booster Club meeting 
every week. Check on people. So that's a great group of individuals, and families, and supporters of Round Rock football. So thank you so much again for making KMAC part of your annual mission. I'm glad to be here with everybody. Kipperman's that is what the coach has been looking there for. There we go. Gets past everybody, and it'll be dropped. All the way back inside the 15 at the 14-yard line is where Stony Point finally falls on it. That's I think, I think that's what Coach has been hoping for all along is that sliding <laughs> skip, and he just gave back the uh, A-OK -okay sign. So I always like to see that when you're the kicker or the center or anyone coming off the field with Coach giving you the thumbs up and A-OK. -okay. 34 seconds left in the first half. You just down it and lick your wounds, or what do you do here? Because you've not done anything that's worked so far. Well, the rain isn't as intense as it was before, so I think they're going to play with a little bit of pride here. Overton at quarterback. No, he's, is that? I don't think that's Overton. Oh, I beg your pardon. It's, it's Thomas. Like, yeah. It's a Wildcat. And it's off his face mask. And, and the ball Wildcat, on the ground. Wildcat. And the Dragons, dragons have it. it. And a flag on the play at the end of everything. Hey, offense, I'm sorry. you got to get up and get back on the field. Let's go put another one in. we got time. Is this a half the distance because Stony Point did something? Either way, it's fumble recovery dragon ball. That snap went right off, right through the hands of Thomas into his face mask down on the ground. And it looks like Garrett Miller was there to fall on top <laughs> of it. And I just get done saying these, these Tigers want to play for a little pride and try to make something happen. That wasn't what they wanted to have happen. I'm sorry, guys. That's a tough break. Defense for Round Rock staying on the field for now. Well, the offense has already left the field. Or the uh, Sony Point offense has already left the field. Well, here come all these. It's 15 yards on us, so it's on us. There we go. Dragons have the football after the turnover and a penalty now. 29 seconds. The ball will be put back to the 26. 7 or 28? 28 yard line. Look at him using his foot to push it back further. Well, Mike, I might have been wrong. I'm alright with 40 to nothing. Seth Ford in. This looks like it might be a throw. <coughs> Excuse me. Marquise Brown in the backfield. Three receivers over to the left side. Colin Sullivan by himself down to the right. Dragons moving again from left to right out the window. Ford takes a snap, quick throw to the right. That's Colin Sullivan caught up at 25, spun around. A host of Tigers right there trying to bring him down. It won't go. Three yards on the catch. Clock will stop on the timeout. 21 seconds. So what do you, Mike, what do you think they do here? I mean, clearly there's two time. they have two timeouts left, I believe? <coughs> yep. No, one. Dragons have one. Just went down, down to one? Okay. Yep. So we got one timeout left. You know, that is time to run a play, run a couple plays if you have the opportunity to get out of bounds. Um, you can call timeout if you, you can run a normal play route up the middle if you want or run it. Do you go for the touchdown or do you go and, you know, try for the field goal? I, I don't think they're trying for the field goal, but, you know, we've seen at Belton an example where they've played that last period, last play, rather than kicking the field goal, trying to go for it on. Uh, you know, on the last play of the half. What do you think Cheatham does here? Well, the you know, it's inclement weather, right? So what a great opportunity to practice a, a long snap <laughs> and kick a field goal. See if you can boost the confidence that way. Well, in their last three and, extra and points have been solid snap, solid yeah, kick. Yep, right. I agree. I mean, that's, you're going to put, in, you know, Kipperman's foot, his leg, his... Or they just score. There. Or they can just run it in. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's up to them. Three receivers to the left, one down, two down to the right. Empty backfield, four, step forward. Check into the sidelines. Play clock is at 21 seconds, and we'll start. See what the offense line does here. Do not take a sack. Quick throw to the right side. Caught by Marquise Brown. Tried to make a move. Lowers his shoulder. He gets up across the 25, and he'll be down at the 21 or 22. We'll see where they spot it. Clock is moving, and doesn't look like they're going to stop it, and it'll end the half right there. No, they're going to call a timeout. Oh, okay, they do call a timeout, and it looks like they will bring their field goal unit out then. So is that what they're going to do? Is Patrick? Yeah, Patrick Lane is coming out, and looks like Ron Rock will be trying what will be about a was that a going to be about a 40-yard field goal. Game clock down to five and a half seconds. Yep. Coach Sheetham just wants those missed those missed Miss extra conversions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> extra points back. Uh oh. 
Here I didn't do anything. The sirens are coming too. Hey, hey boys, I want to say thank you for letting the, the door be open tonight and <laughs> during this. It's not bad. This uh, frigid, no, yeah. frigid north wind here bad. in Texas. This would be, either way, there's a ton of momentum coming off here, but the, uh, the, the momentum of kicking a 40-yard field goal on a thrashing like this, I, I would like as uh, the father of the kicker and center, Mike. Well, sure. Well, and like I said, uh, w what a great opportunity. Or if you just want to fake it. It'll be a 39-yard. Yep. 39-yard attempt for Beck Kipperman. Snap is good. Kick is up. Push into the left. Hooks right in. down the middle. It is good. From 39 yards out. Dragons take a 36-0 lead Mike, in halftime. Mike, can we say it together? <laughs> We're going to say it together. Left, left foot and boom. boom. There we go. So your halftime score, 36-0. Dragons on top. Been all Dragons so far this half. And... Uh, We'll come back here at halftime after we listen to the band and, and hear some of our sponsors, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we'll turn it over to you, Mr. Herrera. You're listening to the Round Rock Dragon Football broadcast tonight on the KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. We'd like to take the time to recognize our 2018-2019 Round Rock Football Booster Club officers. They do a wonderful job supporting our team, coaches, community, and high school. President Michelle Carson. Vice President Randall Ford, Treasurer Sarah Eichenhorst, Secretary Leslie Espinoza, Parliamentarian Mike Calvo, and Member-at-Large Ron Sullivan. The Football Booster Club meets every Monday at 6.30 p.m. in the Dragon's Lair. All parents and fans of the Round Rock Booster Club, or Round Rock Dragon Varsity, JV, and freshman football teams are welcome and encouraged to get involved. Meet me at Rudy's. Visit one of our locations, Round Rock 2400 I-35 South, North 11570 Research Boulevard, South 2451 Capital of Texas Highway, Northwest 620 and 2222. Rudy's Barbecue is a longtime supporter of Round Rock Dragon Football. The classic Texas Burger, Arbor Walk, Breaker and Mopac, Sunset Village, Brody and 290, University Oaks next to Ikea, 1890 Ranch, 1431 and 183A. Mighty Fine, supporting the Round Rock Dragon football team in 2018. PNB Print is a proud sponsor of Dragon Football. Turn to PNB for all your printing needs from invitations and business cards to mailing and promotional products. Visit us at pnbprint.com or you can call 512-255-5510. Again, that's 512-255-5510. Go Dragons! Soapbox Car Wash is happy to sponsor Round Rock Dragon Football. We're open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily and located on Round Rock Avenue between Oakwood Boulevard and Oakland Drive, close to Round Rock High School. Drive on in and get cleaned up with us. Go Rock! Core Speed Gym. You want results? That's what we say and that's what we do. Central Texas Speed and Strength Training Headquarters since 2004. Proudly supporting Round Rock Dragon Football. And at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to turn it over to the Round Rock Dragon Band. You're listening to the KMAX Sports Vipe Media Network.
Are you looking for a little something extra to get your business noticed? At Ideal Signs, they specialize in custom signage and large format digital printing in a variety of media. Their in-house design department can work with you to create custom artwork to your specifications. They'll work with you to conceptualize, design, and produce any custom projects or idea that you might have. Call 512-930-7446 or visit signsforsports.com. Ideal Signs, family owned and operated since 1970. Black Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vibe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vibe, B-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vibe magazine today. Get in the game with Vibe Media. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, imagine a downtown condo tower if it was full of sports. But first, we'll have to evict the hipsters. Not cool, man. Not cool. But don't worry about them. They won't starve. There's plenty of food trailers left on Rainy Street. Oh, what's that? They ran them all out? Aw, poor hipsters. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. We are KMAX Sports. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, we all have at least one of those, you're needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive. Helping people help pets. Vibe Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vibe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vibe, V-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vibe magazine today. Get in the game with Vibe Media. Sound off. Tell us what you think right here on Twitter at KMAX Sports. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, just imagine inner space caverns if it was full of sports. Okay, so, so which way to the game? Man, it sure is dark in here for sports. Ah, dang it. Ow. Oh, that hurts. Bringing your teams to you in the stadiums, ballparks, and gymnasiums where they belong. We are KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Look and left, goes into the end. Bad snap complete. again, he hits the turf, and Del Bar scoops it up, Cameron Wilkins the corner on the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. We are the largest, we are the best, bringing your teams to you. We've been doing it for 15 years. Inside, he's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. 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 5, touchdown. touchdown. It's what we do. And nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. Follow all the game day action right on our Twitter feed, at KMAX Sports. Are you looking for a little something extra to get your business noticed? At Ideal Signs, they specialize in custom signage and large format digital printing in a variety of media. Their in-house design department can work with you to create custom artwork to your specifications. They'll work with you to conceptualize, design, and produce any custom projects or idea that you might have. Call 512-930-7446 or visit signsforsports.com. Ideal Signs, family owned and operated since 19. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Look and left. Goes into the end. Bad snap complete. again. He hits the turf. And Del Bar scoops it up. Cameron Wilkins the corner on the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Side, he's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. Touchdown. Five. Touchdown. Yes, sir. It's what we do. And nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, imagine a downtown condo tower if it was full of sports. But first, we'll have to evict the hipsters. Not cool, man. Not cool. But don't worry about them. They won't starve. There's plenty of food trailers left on Rainy Street. Oh, what's that? They ran them all out? Aw, poor hipsters. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. We are... KMAX Sports. 
follow all the game day action right on our Twitter feed at KMAX Sports. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? We're like the biggest, most beautiful field of blue bonnets you can imagine. Except we're not going to play sports here because they're blue bonnets. What, are you crazy? We'll get some nice pictures before we go, though. Hey, hey, kids, just sit down over there. Yeah, right in the middle of them. Smile. Perfect. Well, we'll send this one to Grandma. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. We are KMAX Sports. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, we all have at least one of those, you're needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive. Helping people help pets. Sound off. Tell us what you think right here on Twitter at KMAX Sports. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, just imagine Inner Space Caverns. If it was full of sports. Okay, so, so which way to the game? Man, it sure is dark in here for sports. Ah, dang it. Ow. Oh, that hurt. Bringing your teams to you in the stadiums, ballparks, and gymnasiums where they belong. We are KMAX Sports. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, think of the Congress Avenue Bridge Bat Colony. Okay, folks, here they come. They're flying out from under the bridge. They appear to be Louisville Slugger, and they're falling. Oh, ah, oh, the humanity. As God is my witness, I thought bats could fly. Bringing your teams to you since 2003 without dropping the ball or the bat. We are KMAX Sports. Bite Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, B-Y-P-E, Texas.com and also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Look at left. Throws into the end Bad zone. snap again. He hits the turf. And, and he Devon scoops it up. Cameron Wilkins the corner of the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. If you like the sound of that, then let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. It's what we do. We are KMAX Sports. Vibe Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vibe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vibe, V-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vibe magazine today. Get in the game with Vibe Media. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Looking left, throws into the end Bad snap please. again, he hits the turf. And Devon scoops it up, Cameron Wilkins. In the corner of the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. We are the largest we are the best bringing your teams to you we've been doing it for 15 years Inside, he's got blockers in front of him touchdown. Touchdown. Five. Touchdown. Touchdown. it's what we do and nobody does it better we are k-max sports at Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, we all have at least one of those. You're needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive. Helping people help pets. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? We're like the biggest, most beautiful field of blue bonnets you can imagine. Except we're not going to play sports here because they're blue bonnets. What, are you crazy? We'll get some nice pictures before we go, though. Hey, hey, kids, just sit down over there. Yeah, right in the middle of them. Smile. 
Perfect. Well, we'll send this one to Grandma, bringing your teams to you since 2003. We are KMAX Sports. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, imagine a downtown condo tower if it was full of sports. But first, we'll have to evict the hipsters. Not cool, man. Not cool. But don't worry about them. They won't starve. There's plenty of food trailers left on Rainy Street. Oh, what's that? They ran them all out? Aw, poor hipsters. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. We are KMAX Sports. Follow all the game day action right on our Twitter feed, at KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network, and this is what we do. Look at left, throws into the end zone. That's him again, he hits the turf, and And DeBoss gives it up, Cameron Wilkins the corner of the end zone. 10, 5, touchdown. If you like the sound of that, then let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXsports.com or Chuck at KMAXsports.com to find out how. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. It's what we do. We are KMAX Sports. Mike Rose along with Blake Pereira, Bruce Cooperman, our QA is Mr. McGraw from back in the KMAX studio. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And a shout out to my new president of my fan club, Miss Tina. She said that... She, hey, hey, hey! She said that I'm sounding good and we're doing a great job. So uh, I'm, I guess I have a fan club that's forming and uh, so appreciate that very much. Will, will the new president open up uh, a new Twitter account for the Mike Rose Appreciation or Mike Rose Fan Club? Uh, she did suggest maybe she could be uh, she could get the the beverage run for us. Well, hello, Miss Tina. Nice so to meet you virtually. Yes. yes so, um, it, on, on a rainy night, we'll let Bruce do it. But uh. yeah, I, well, you know what was great is it's it's misting. It's not bad. But I got more wet walking under the bleachers with the <laughs> residue rain that fell between the bleachers <laughs> that I am soaking in <laughs> secondhand slop. <laughs> I'm gonna die. That's pretty funny. I went down to talk to folks. Uh, Blake and Blake and I are talking about having to make some adjustments uh, so people can listen to us a little more effectively. And so kudos to you, Blake. I know it's been a little rough run the first half, but uh, <laughs> it's called uh, learning on the fly. And was the yes, feedback sir. that people were able nice to hear job. us? Yeah, we, they can do a much better job of hearing us and a little more clearly. So we might be going into the the hundreds by the end yeah. of uh, this week. Blake Herrera for the president of the. Junior class and round yes, Well, school. not only that, the uh, president of the this will be the Kippy fan club. Well, Kippy, you fan. got Miss Tina, I got Blake. There we go. Welcome aboard, Blake. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, you an guys honor. are you guys are wonderful individuals, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and claim victory on uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, on the membership of. I'm going to say clubs. Tina might be a little bit more cu- uh, n- no disrespect, Blake, cuter than Blake. Mike, let's go do uh let's let's talk about the first half. Oh my gosh. We were just talking it's the best half we've seen in a long time. I've I've had a son in Round Rock football now. This is the seventh year. And we've had great teams. Uh, from three years ago, four years ago, six years ago. This was the best half football I've ever seen a Round Rock Dragon team play out of the last eight years. And it wasn't just offense, mm-hmm. which we've known was gonna be unstoppable. We called that the beginning of the show. The defense was so dominant and played with so much control and emotion that I've never seen Garrett Miller play defense like that. I've never had we've never had since James Lynch right. a player like that. Stony Point didn't prepare for that. No. And that's really fun to see uh, the potential there as it's something new every week. I mean Marquise and, and Ryan rain has stopped, so it's gonna be inter- interesting to see. But uh, you know, you end the half on a forty yard field goal. Only one punt during the first half, and Stony Point hasn't gotten more than probably 30 yards of offense. It's been a, a tough hole, that's for sure. Um, but you mentioned the rain. A lot of things to overcome, a lot of things to fight against, a lot of things to uh, prepare for and, and use your advantage or disadvantage, and not letting that affect you um, has been evident and awesome. So we're getting ready for kickoff right here for the... the uh, Third quarter begin, they're letting the, the halftime clock go to zero, then they'll reset it, which they do. Beck Kipperman in his three-step drop, ready to kick off from left to right. Dragons won the coin toss being the game. They went on offense right away, so a little pooch kick here. Going to the right side, fair caught at the 30-yard line by Stony Point. That's where they'll start things. 
Oh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put my glasses on now so I can see what's going on. Welcome back to uh, to the, the land of the sea. Hey, there, hey, look, there's players down there, guys. <laughs> we got a football game on. going. Heavenly days. How about that? So let's see if uh, you know. Clearly, I don't know how what Ron Rock would do to make adjustments. Um, but we've got Kyle Overton coming back on the field, and we've got a defense that is not very tired right now, and an offensive line that has just been beaten down by a defense with a three-man front. Four backs in the backfield. I, I guess I should say three with a quarterback. Diamond pistol handoff around the edge, getting the corner up across the 30 to 35. Down to the 36-yard line, six yards on the carry. That was number five for Stony Point. Tyler O'Bannon. Yeah, the, the, raining, the rain slowing down should help the exchange for both teams, and Stony Point desperately needs some sort of momentum to open up this half. Again, another diamond pistol for Stony Point. Runner comes in motion from left to right. Two receivers to the right side. Nobody over here to the left. Overton takes the snap. Hand it off going around right Not side. Not tonight. Nothing Not there. Tonight. He is hit hard and knocked backwards. Mumin Ahmed. Mumin Ahmed met Kellen Thomas in the backfield. That'll be third down and for Stony Point. Every time that there's some success on first down, it's met with a second down that just kills Stony Point's momentum. That's the third time that's happened. I'm not w I'm not uh, upset about it at all. Back to the 30-yard line. It's third down and 10. When it comes in motion out of the backfield, that's O'Bannon. Over to take snap and drops back to throw. Moth in my face. Caught up across the 45. Up to midfield and dropped into Dragon territory. Nice pitch and catch there for Stony Point Tigers getting things going. That's Quaylen Lomax on the reception. His first catch of the evening. And I believe now might be the first first down for Stony I Point believe it is the first first down. Uh, and first time that Kyle Overton's been able to stand upright on a throw tonight. Ball into Dragon territory at the 47. First down and 10. Get my microphone set where it needs to be. Apologize about that. Two backs in the backfield. Over to take snap. He's going to take off running up the middle. Gets caught from behind. He'll get about five, maybe six yards on the carry. Down to the 42. So five yards on the carry. And the rain is almost non-existent now. Is that thing in here? Yeah. yeah thanks. Swat it at me, Mike. I appreciate that. You're welcome. I don't want it. Things carrying the Ebola virus. It's a mock. Do they do that? That's gross. I touched it. <laughs> Going to die. Second and five. Two receivers to the right. Overton drops back to throw a little bubble screen. Caught up at the 30 or 45. Makes a move up across the 30. Still on his feet. That's Cleveland across the 20. Way down close to the 15. They'll mark him at the 17 yard line. Yeah, you know. Huge play for the Tigers. Wow. Five defensive linemen went for the screen and went towards Overton. They see him and they want to hit him. And, uh, you know, it's a good play by the Stony Point offense. Let's, let's get a 25 yards. Gain and a stop here. First and 10 on the 15. At the 17 yard line, snapped Overton looking to throw out to the right side in the flat. Caught at the 10, makes a move. Steps out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Second down and two. Where is it? There you go. Won't be bugged by that Ebola carrier anymore. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Bruce the Exterminator Chipperman on the scene. Snapped Overton. Up the middle, met by a host of dragons, knocked backwards to the 11 yard line. Yeah, I think one on the, plate. the defense is probably excited knowing they get to hit Kyle Overton whenever they can. To run up the middle on a short field, uh, bad play call in my opinion. <coughs> Very bad play call when you've been, you've been passing with some success to start the second half. That was a, uh, a wasted play. Third, third and now four. Manageable, but why? Bannon out of the backfield. Be up back there. Quick look. Overton has spin around. Gets out of the pocket. Into the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. That was good, good wow. play. Number 
number 18. That's Jalen Stafford on the catch for an 11-yard touchdown pass. There ends the shutout. <laughs> well, we knew that the uh, Stony Point offense had some potency. Clearly the uh, rain impacted them significantly in the first half as they couldn't get anything started. Good drive to start the second half. Hines for the extra point. I believe that's who that is. Yep, kick is up. Looked like it was good. It is good. 36 to 7, the score here. You're listening to Round Rock Dragon Football on the KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. Meet me at Rudy's. Visit one of our locations, Round Rock 2400 I-35 South, North 11570 Research Boulevard, South 2451 Capital of Texas Highway, Northwest 620 and 2222. Rudy's Barbecue is a longtime supporter of Round Rock Dragon Football. The Classic Texas Burger. Arbor Walk, Breaker and Mopac, Sunset Village, Brody and 290, University Oaks next to Ikea, 1890 Ranch, 1431, and 183A. Mighty Fine, supporting the Round Rock Dragon football team in 2018. So for the second time tonight, Stony Point will kick off back to Round Rock. Well, hopefully they don't try an onside kick here, Mike. <coughs> Hines to kick it off. A little pooch kick. It'll land at the 15. Scooped up by Brown. Brown to the 20. Over the shoulder up across the 25. Down to the 26-yard line. That's where the Dragons will take over. I'd like to see a, a statement drive like we had to end the first, the, uh, first half or the last three drives of the first half, Mike, to just not uh, take our foot off the gas. This is in a, in non in a conference rivalry game that you've got to win. There is no time to take uh, the pressure off. No, not at all. Two receivers as the Dragons come up to the right side, one up top to the left. O'Keefe and Brown in the backfield snap to O'Keefe going to hand off to Marquise. Marquise has it, gets around the edge, tries to get it around further out to the right. It's brought down as he crosses the 30 to the 31-yard line. Gain of five on the carry. <coughs> Looks like the rain has stopped altogether. Umbrellas are down. Poncho hoods are down. Good sign. That's a good sign, yep. Cross. Two receivers up top. To the left, one down here to the right. O'Keefe and Marquise in the background. Hand off to Marquise. Lowers his shoulder, pushes the pile, and then moves it back. Gain about a yard on the carry. The third down and manageable for the Dragons. All right, boys. 7.30 to go here in the third quarter. Again, Dragons on top, 36-7. to seven. This looks like a, an O'Keefe play. Empty backfield as Ryan O'Keefe is at quarterback. Two receivers down to the right, three up top from the left. Hoffman comes in motion. O'Keefe fakes the handoff, trying the to get the edge, play. gets the block, cuts back. Nice move by Ryan. Spins across the 40 up to the 43-yard line. First down for the Dragons. The nice O'Keefe play, Mike. The nice O'Keefe play. Sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. No, yeah, you're right. You'll keep play. He's called it. There it was. Excuse me, just what the doctor ordered. Well, again, when you ta we talked earlier, this run pass option, you've got to guess at someone. And whenever Hoffman has gone across for a jet sweep, nine times out of ten, he gets it. So they guess towards Car uh, Karch and Ryan, easy ten-yard pickup. Hoffman again comes in motion. Ball on the ground. It's kicked around. It looks like the Stony Point Tigers have landed on top of it, and they do. It'll be a turnover back to Stony Point. Up at the 43-yard line of Round Rock. So great field position for Sony Point on that turnover. Tough break for the Dragons, darn it. It didn't look like a bad snap. No, it was uh, O'Keefe was going to make something happen on that jet sweep as Hoffman came in motion. And he could get it into his hands, and it went on the ground and as uh, Marquise Brown came in motion. He punted it forward right into the hands of the Tigers. Well, not the momentum that we wanted to start this first half, or second half. That's probably the fifth or sixth snap that Ryan has dropped. 
that shouldn't have been dropped as well. So the defense has a little bit of work to do here to reestablish their presence. Two backs in the backfield, two receivers over here to the left, one up top to the right. Abandon comes in motion over to the right side. Now two receivers each side. Over to take snap, steps up in the pocket, gets around Miller, takes off running across the 40. Still on his feet, tries to make a move on Miller's, gets to the sideline. Ball knocked out of bounds. Out of, out of his hands, but it's out of bounds as he crosses the 30 down to the 29-yard line. Huge run for Overton. Wow. Yeah, had it looks like uh, I think it was Garrett had his hands on him and just wasn't able to keep keep him and bring him down uh, behind the line of scrimmage. Two receivers up top to the left, one down here to the receiver to the right, one down to the left, I beg your pardon. And up back in the backfield. Snap to Overton. He can take it tough around the right side. Ball oh. loose. It's on the ground. Picked and up. There he goes. Oh. Down the sideline of the 50, the 40, 30, untouched, 20, 10. Touchdown, Dragons. There's a flag down on the play, but it looks like uh, the possession's already been turned. Will Kyle Overton get a uh, touchdown throw for that? No, because he fumbled, so it won't be a pick six. Carson Otworth picks that ball up, takes off running, but we'll see what the flag is here. You're right, Bruce. Well, either way, it'll be Ron Rock, either a touchdown or a Ron Rock ball back at midfield. I don't know what it was. <coughs> We're just watching Carson run. To me, that's all that mattered. <laughs> that, that Stony Point didn't have the ball any longer. Uh, long, long, Longer. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Officials meeting at midfield with the referee. Wait, the silence is deafening. The silence you hear is Lambeau Field. Looks like it'll be on the Dragons as the offense is coming back on the field. So again, similar second time that we've had this, no real harm on a uh, on a turnover. So Stony Point. Not able to uh, capitalize with discipline to move the ball back down the field. Legal block in the back by Round Rock. Uh, I don't, that had to that's happen. A, that's a huge block. Did they even pick the ball up that far? Well, it's 10 yards. They're saying they did it uh, right when he picked it up, and the flag was thrown down by the 55 or 45. So. I'm not sure how okay. that happens. Ball down to the 31-yard line. Of we'll take it, though, Mike. Point. Yep, it's dragging football on a turnover nonetheless. All right, let's focus on catching the snap. And 621 to go it. here in third quarter. Round Rock with the football. Three receivers over here to the right side. One up top to the left. Keith takes a snap, looks to throw. Now it's dancing around, trying to get out of the way of somebody. Does make somebody miss. Nice block on the edge. Gets O'Keefe free as he gets across the 40. He steps out of bounds. Karch Hoffman with a great seal block wow. right there. Fantastic job by Karch Hoffman right there. It's one of those plays where you just kind of get frustrated that Ryan dances around, but he dances around because he knows that you can't catch him when he gets going. So what was a loss of three or four by dancing and standing and jumping ends up as a 15-yard gain. Ball moves up to the 43-yard line, so... 13-yard gain, sorry. It's all right. We're actually going to say 12 because they're at the 31, but whatever. I had to do you it. You say sorry. potato. Hand off to Marquise Brown around the edge. Push backwards, but not before he gets to the 45, so two yards on the carry for Marquise Brown. I think Ron Rock's going to be content with the clock continuing to run. You know, it... I'm sure the parents of the wide receivers would like to see the ball thrown. Yes, oh yes. Um, and as a fan, we'd like to see the score go higher on our side. But I think this is going to be slow and methodical and uh, keep the defense healthy and off the field. Two receivers each side. Quick throw out to the right. Caught by a Miller. Miller gets up across midfield. He's upended. He'll be tackled. Brought down at the 49 of Stony Point. Manageable. Third and two. Six yards on the pitch and catch. Garrett being rewarded for some of his incredible defensive play there with a nice little pitch to run, run five yards. 
Trevor Waz in the game, lined up over to the left side. Direct snap to Marquise Brown, up across the 35, receiving 45 to the 40. Brought down inside the 40 yard line at the 38. First down for the Dragons. 11 yards on the carry for Marquise Brown, right back to the action. Dragons get set on the line. Direct snap to Marquise Brown once again, going to the right side. Pushes the pile across the 35, now brought down at the 33 yard line. Five yards on that carry. You know, one day, Marquise is going to take the direct snap and throw it. And whoever he throws it to is going to not have anyone within 45 yards of him. <laughs> but each time he runs it, he gets six yards, so yeah. don't know why he'd throw. Looks like Seth Ford's back in at quarterback. You are correct, sir. Karch Hoffman in the background, backfield along with Marquise Brown. Two receivers up top to the left. Colin Sullivan by himself down to the right. Ford takes the snap. Hands off to Brown. Brown ma makes a move. Tried to get around the left side. Still on his feet. Cuts back. Hits a wall of Tiger defenders. And he'll get up to the 31 yard line. Make that the 32. That was a lot of running for two yards, Mike. Looked like he kept trying to break it. Broke it. And just got hit by another defender. So third and manageable. Third and three, four. Third and four. Yes, sir. Taking the time, like I said, the play, the, uh, the play clock down to 20 seconds. The game clock, we're at 3.40 to go here in the third quarter. Dragons on top, 36-7. to seven. Two receivers down here to the right side. Marquise Brown, uh, excuse me, Ryan O'Keefe, one of those receivers. Seth Ford, a quarterback. Quick throw out to O'Keefe. Caught and met by a wall of defenders and pushed backwards. So he'll lose gain ground on that play. It'll be fourth down for the Dragons. Yeah, that was a unique play call. Really unique play call. I know you want to get the ball in Ryan's hands, but... That's just a, uh, from the weak side of the field all the way across the field is a tough play to do. So now you got third, fourth and six at the 20, 34. I don't think it's a close enough game to kick a field goal, so they're going to go for it. O'Keefe back at quarterback. Takes a snap, rolling to his left, looking to throw. As a receiver going over the top, there's Sullivan drops in the bucket, but it's he caught it. Caught it. It is caught. Wow, nice job by Sullivan, staying with it all the way down to the five yard line. A first and goal for the Dragons. That was a great, great catch. Sullivan was running with his shoulder shoulder pad clipped up in, in his uniform. I'm not sure how he made that catch, but he did. Great job by the Dragons. First and goal. 2:35 to go here in the third quarter. Great catch. Great catch for sure. Like seeing Colin be able to go out there and run after it. Back in the Wildcat. Greg snap. Brown with it. Gets spun around and knocked backwards to lose two on the carry. Clearly at halftime, the offense, uh, Coach Tenney must have seen something he liked on the left side of the line. Because each of those plays uh, on those Wildcats have gone left. I believe in the first half, a couple of the running uh, touchdowns went to the right. You're right, yeah. So interesting. Uh, is it a bait and catch, here, bait and switch here? To set up uh, the left side to go to the right, or I'm not sure. Ryan back in quarterback. Keep takes snap, takes the handoff, rolling to his right, looking to throw off his back foot, incomplete. Mm. Rush that throw. He was wide open, just a bad throw. Miller upset. He wants. He wants a touchdown. He does. He wants someone to. He wants a better throw for a touchdown. Someone else go in there for a second, so I can blow off some steam. Third down for the Dragons. Third down and goal. I should, I should say. Down inside, two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Unfortunately, with the incompletion, the clock stops. But we nice sustained drive right here. Ryan O'Keefe in the backfield at quarterback. Hoffman coming in motion. O'Keefe takes himself, goes up the middle, still on his feet. Good Touch job by the wow. good, good job by the offense line. You got three different Ron Ron, or Stony Point guys on the ground, and uh, looks like back as well as Sam Eichen, Mike Mike Horse just nonchalantly stepped over them to get back into their place for the, the point after. So great, great, great drive. Gladly we'll take the uh, fumble by Kyle, Over Kyle Overton on that. Seven yard touchdown run by Ryan O'Keefe and an extra point forthcoming by Beck Kipperman. The snap, and the kick is up and it is good right down Broadway. Left footed boom. Ooh, wow. Pull them out of the way back. 
43 to 7 the score 145 to go here in the third quarter your dragons on top you're listening to round rock dragon football on the kmax sports vibe media network the classic Texas burger, Arbor Walk, Breaker and Mopac, Sunset Village, Brody and 290, University Oaks next to Ikea, 1890 Ranch, 1431 and 183A. Mighty Fine, supporting the Round Rock Dragon football team in 2018. Soapbox Car Wash is happy to sponsor Round Rock Dragon football. We're open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily and located on Round Rock Avenue between Oakwood Boulevard and Oakland's Drive, close to Round Rock High School. Drive on in and get cleaned up with us. Go Rock. So, Mike, that to me was a, uh, a a dagger. You turn around, take a turnover, and give it back to the uh, Round Rock de- offense, mm-hmm. which isn't going to do that twice in a row, which they clearly didn't, went right down right. the field. Then definitely things are going to start getting chippy from Stony Point's perspective. They're down huge. They haven't been down this big all week, all, all season. And this is a rivalry game. And uh, after the point after, they definitely went after number 15 on Round Rock. So we just got to stay, stay composed. Kipperman puts his foot into it. No one is bit. there. No Who's going to go get it? The free ball as it goes out of bounds. Good job by O'Bannon to knock that out of bounds. Keep it in possession of Stony Point. Back at the 16. Huge, huge. Again, 145 to go here in the third quarter. Be good to see. Uh, defense should be re- revitalized. They got a nice, a nice turnover, which on our defense is a welcomed uh, commodity because we don't get a lot of them. And uh, let their offense go back down. Spread that, def- or spread the uh, the gap of how much they're up by, and see what the defense can do here. Overton takes the snap as the band goes in motion, looking to throw wide open and over the throw and incomplete. Wow. Someone missed a uh, <laughs> a, a signal or missed who they were supposed to cover there, but I will definitely take Kyle throwing it over the gentleman because he would still be running <laughs> if it was thrown well. Second down and 10, 17 yard line. Sony Point taking their time getting set. Play clock down to 15 seconds. Plenty of time for them as they get everybody in place. Two receivers up top to the right. Nobody down to the left. Two back to the backfield. Hand off to O'Bannon. Going to the right side. Still on his feet. Trying to get that edge. Gets up across the 15. Excuse me, the, the 20, I beg your pardon. Yeah, looks like they didn't really give him a favorable bo- uh, spot there, huh, Mike? No. Nope. Ball will be placed at the, just across the 20 yard line at the 21. Third and six. It's an interesting perspective as the coach for Stony Point is electing to run here. Uh, you know, again, down a country mile in, in deficit, but no real desire to try airing it out multiple times. Um, you know, what do you think of that, Mike? Well, he's got lots of speed on the field, but yeah, definitely needs to make sure. And then again, another false start. And the ball goes across the middle, in and out of the hands. Jordan Smart right there to lay a lick on number two, and he can't hang on to it. It's incomplete. Be fourth down. And believe it or not, holy the, moly. Now it was at a great hit, but believe it or not, the referee still did not call the motion, motion yeah. on the three wide receivers that clearly had taken off before the play was called. But what a great hit by Jordan Smart. <laughs> Man, I love seeing that. That was beautiful. He used his shoulder, didn't do anything. Hit him in the shoulders. Yep. It was great. Great great, tec- great technique and great execution. Victorian to kick it away on the punt. End over end. It'll take a round rock roll as it's down to right at the 50-yard line. Well, the defense stepped up there, Mike, doing exactly what they did to finish the first half or the entire first half. Looks like we just had one little, uh, one little glip of Concerned to start the second half, and they're back in business. Now, Ron Rock's offense. Uh, I think if we get a touchdown here, Mike, we might see some of the uh, the folks that don't get a lot of time get some time. I, think I hope right. so. I hope so. Two receivers down here to the right, and Hoffman comes in motion from right to left. O'Keefe takes a snap, hands off to Marquise Brown. 
Dives across the 50 to the 49. Gain of one on the plate. Mike, did you get stats from half first half? I did, but they're not loading on my phone. Okay. So I'm trying to get, get it to go. I'm just, in, you know, I'm a big fan of our running backs getting 100 yards. And I know Marquise has three touchdowns. I just don't know how he's doing yardage-wise, nor Ryan. We've got a heap load of points, but I don't know if it's been a heap load of yards, if you know what I mean. Right. End of the quarter is upon us. Get to the fourth quarter. The Dragons on top, 43-7. to seven. You're listening to Round Rock Dragon Football on the KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. Realtor Jen Griffith at Southern Roots Realty Group is on a mission to service her clients every real estate need, no matter how big or small, while building lifetime client relationships. Buying, selling, leasing, or investing, she and her team are here to help you through it all. Call 512-970-5130. Again, that's 512-970-5130. Go Rock Football. Who feeds the dragons? Fabulous Affair Catering feeds the dragons, and we can feed your crew too. Call us, 512-653-5237. Again, that's 512-653-5237 to help us prepare for your next event. R-O-C-K. Go Dragons. Thanks, Blake. We've got uh, start the fourth quarter. First play uh, from scrimmage. We've got Ron Rock first and 10 from the Stony Point 49-yard line. Seth Ford in at quarterback, and... The starting team is uh, will start off to start the second fourth quarter. Often in motion, takes the cuts it back for a little counter play. Gets all the way down to the 40 yard line. Enough for a dragon first down. Had to go get a tissue and ask Bob Brinkman, our stats guru. Uh, 36 carries for 252 yards in the first half. Okay, well I'm liking that. Yep. Wasn't all Marquis, so Wasn't that's combined, right? Uh, yeah, Ryan had the the, the the bulk of it. The bulk of it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yep. So. All right, well, I've, again, I'd like to see both those gentlemen get above 50, uh, 100 yards for the, for the night, and uh, I don't know how much time they're going to be given to go do that. Ryan O'Keefe had 18 carries for 173 yards. Marquis had 12 carries for 53. Next play for the Dragons is a loss on the play as they get knocked backwards. Seth Ford trying to make something happen, and he gets knocked back to the 41, loss of two on the plate. Well, it's good to see Seth Ford back getting hit. I know that uh, last week he didn't play due to the cheap shot that he got in the put on him in, in the uh, Vandergriff game. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I don't think it, w it was not concussion. Like it was, he got uh, his shoulder w was unable to throw. So good to see him getting hits and getting back on the field to uh, run and to throw. Two receivers deep side. Hoffman comes in motion from left to right takes the snap. He'll get no gain on the play back to the 41 yard line. Be third down and 12. Evidently no one heard me that I want Marquise to get 100 yards, Mike. Can Nobody you go make did. that happen? I'm 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 if you want to go get a Kleenex and go down and tell the coaches I'd like Marquise to get 100 yards, that's fine. <laughs> See what I can do. Third and 12. Dragons taking their time. 20 seconds on the play clock. This is Seth Ford uh, this is where Seth Ford's most dangerous with the ball and able to throw it. The empty backfield pro set here for the Dragons. Three receivers up top to the right, two down to the left. That's Hoffman and Sullivan down here to the left side. Ford takes a snap, drop back, quick throw out no. to Sullivan in and out of the hands. Incomplete to be fourth down. Uh, so A, really premature throw by Seth. B, I don't know why that call was made. If you got fourth and third and 12, throw the ball more than zero yards so this is uh, lining up to be one of those we're gonna try getting the offsides or nope we're just going for the uh, we're just gonna punt it away here yep so the board drops back midfield for the punt gets it away mm -hmm. give right a bounce side and then the hit take oh, a roll go. inside the 15 and out of bounds Ryan O'Keefe was over there had to do a little moonwalk to get out of the way of that one. Ball be spotted at the 12-yard line. Two good punts by Seth point. Ford thus far tonight. Absolutely. Not a lot of yards, <laughs> but inside the, the the 20 on both of them. Down at 9.55 to go here in the fourth quarter. So good chunk of time taken off the clock there by Round Rock. A couple minutes. All 
All right, defense. Snap. Looks like it's Tingle. Oh, tipped in out of the hands, almost into the hands of Round Rock. Well, he had a lot of room to Kevin run. Thomas, yes, he did. Looks like we've got uh, the s the second quarterback in now. Yep, what? Jackson Tingler back in there. Mr. Uh, I said Tingle, but it's Tingler. My bad. You're all good. We might uh, be have seen the last of uh, Mr. Overton for the evening. Could be. He took a licking and decided to not keep ticking. Two receivers now over here to the right side. Nobody up, or one up top to the left, I beg your pardon. Tingler with the snap, taking himself up the middle, wrapped up by Sylvester Smart. A couple yards on the carry up across the 20. Or excuse me, 15 to the 17, I beg your pardon. Five yards now. So we're so if Third the down and five. Mike, if the uh, defense holds here, I would. I gotta think that the uh, the second offensive line will get to go in. Uh, just out of to get some time in for them to get some reps, don't you think? I think you're right. Yeah. For motion Tingler looking to throw has a person wide open out in the flat, caught at the 25 to the 30, trying to make a move, tight stunt, misses on the tackle. Up across 35, whip down close to the 40-yard line. They'll mark him down right there at the 40. A big, big, big play of 24 yards for the, the sure Tigers. Was. Sure was. Missed the tackle and just one-on-one -on -one coverage. Good, good decision. Good decision by the quarterback. And that receiver is left wide open there in the flat too. Had a lot of real estate in front of him to go. Three backs in the backfield. Two receivers up top to the left. Nobody down here to the right. 20 point movement from left to right out the window here. Hand off to Kendall Thomas trying to get around the edge. Drag backwards. Good play by Ashton Miller. Ashton Miller is right there. <laughs> Second down and 11. Make that 12 for Stony Point. I don't know if that play has worked yet tonight. Mike has it? I don't think so. And this is a good maturation, too, to, to, when you say that, for the Dragons. You know, we talked a, bit, a little bit about it, but at the beginning of the season, the Dragons, second, you know, their secondary was still kind of struggling, so the linebackers had to really help out in coverage. And now Ashton Millers and, and his linebacking crew have been let loose a lot more to make plays up cl closer to the line of scrimmage. And it's evident by that. Tingler looking to throw has plenty of time going way downfield. And it's, oh, oh. Titus Dunk was right there for the pick and then out of the hands. <laughs> you got to catch that one. Oh. He flung himself to the Dr. R.L. Peters Jr. Paint on the field on the far side after that one. And what a great, oh, what a gr great defensive play there. I mean, absolutely. Again, uh, we won't, won't, no, it's won't cry out that we didn't get the interception, but it was just, just really right. refreshing to see the pursuit, right, and uh, the team, the, you know, owning what their their targets were on coverage. So I know I feel bad for Titus <laughs> if anything else. Yeah, it was a good play. Great, good play. Yeah, good defense right there. And Almost had a, a punt like turnover right there. So two receivers over to each side, one back to the backfield. O'Bannon comes in motion. Bumble! Drops it on the ground, and he's going to be knocked backwards for a big, big loss. Ahmed, Ahmed again, had a great game thus far tonight. Between, uh, you know, Mummin and Garrett Miller's names have been called quite a bit tonight. Fourth and 20? Correct. A.K.A. Country Mile. Country Mile. Victorian in for the punt once again. Padding his stats tonight. Now can we catch the punt? Maybe. Dragon's coming on no the pressure that right will there. Not get out of the way, everyone. Everybody's getting out of the way on that one. It'll take a dragon hop, thank goodness. No, it takes a tiger roll. Yeah, uh, that's not, that's, that's okay. That's an All average. All the way down to the 41-yard line of Round Rock. That's where we'll start. 7.02 to go here in the fourth quarter. Dragons on top, 43-7. You're listening to Round Rock Dragon Football on the KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. Core Speed Gym. You want results? That's what we say, and that's what we do. Central Texas Speed and Strength Training Headquarters since 2004. Proudly supporting Round Rock Dragon football. Well, Mike, it looks like they, uh, I don't know what they're doing. 
I don't think Beck is, Beck is not in it. No, it's the second team. Well, no, Beck is well, in part of guard. It. Ford takes the snap, and he's going to try to get around the around the right side, and he'll be hit by a wall of defenders and maybe a yard on the carry up to the 42. Yeah, it looks like Sam is uh, not in this series. Beck's uh, in his, tack, his guard next to Toby. Yeah, next to Toby uh, on the on the tackle on the left side. See, it's it's not fair. It's, it's been a few weeks now, but both your children, 59 and 58, and I keep <laughs> looking at 59, and I should be looking at 58. Well, you're fine looking at any hand off to, to Hoffman, and he's knocked backwards for a loss on the play. Be third down and 12 for the Dragons. Yeah, we're not going the, the right way. The Come on, O-line. Come on, offense. Albeit we're up by 36, I would really like uh, to move north-south, not south-north. That would be ideal, for sure. One back in the backfield with Seth Ford. Three receivers up top to the right. One down here to the left. Snap, quick throw out to the right side. Caught by Hoffman. Hoffman trying to make a move. Gets around the edge, flung forward, but not enough for a first down. It'll be up close to the 45-yard line. The mark at the 44. So six yards on the carry will be fourth down and seven. They'll bring up <laughs> punch and crew. Seth Ford moves back deep. A legitimate, genuine pump punt uh, snap here. Got uh, looks like a normal long snapper. Seth with a great punt, beautiful punt. Fielded back inside the 20, trying to make a move as he crosses the 20, push backwards. That's O'Bannon. He'll mark him right at the 20 yard line, I believe. Yep, that's where the Tigers will start. Number 45. Is that uh? I think it's uh, number five. No, forty-five. Sorry. Oh, oh for round run. Yeah, that's. Uh, it's good to see Clayton Barnett back in. Yeah. Clayton did the long snap as well as got the uh, the the tackle there. So I know Clayton's back on the field, but it's just really good to have our seniors back out and healthy. Tingler takes a snap, hands off to O'Bannon. Bannon slips on a shadow, and he'll be knocked backwards for four yards. Back to the sixteen. So I think the starting linemen are probably done. I, I had hoped they're done for the night. They've earned their uh, they've earned their keep, I would yeah. think. Coach Carter down there having a chat with them. Doesn't look real worried. Or real worried or ramping them back up. Tingler takes the snap, fakes the handoff, drop back throws, pressure. Oh! Almost got there. Now he'll dump it off just out of the reach. And a flag on the play. He's going to be holding, but man, that would have been a great sack right there. It would have. Great pressure by the Dragons getting all the way back there. What's the penalty, Mike? I didn't see it. I believe it's going to be holding. On us or on them? On them, I believe. Looked like there was a little bit of pulling on the jersey as Tingler was trying to get outside and make something happen. Yeah, not only would we bring you the uh, the broadcast, I will also let you know um, the rain has stopped completely. No more puddles being formed. So it was a. Uh, so that's good to see. Illegal man downfield. Oh, okay. That'll work too. Four oh nine to go here in the football game. Dragons have the Tigers pinned back deep, and that penalty moves them all the way back to the eleven. Runner comes in motion from right to left. Snap to Tingler, fakes the handoff, looking to throw. Out to the right, has a receiver cutting across, in and out of the hands. It's a good it's attempt. Abandoned. Yeah, it was. Abandoned dove for it. Had a had a good angle on it. Yeah, it was, it was a, a good play, good throw. Just overthrew a little bit, and it was a good attempt. Decent coverage by uh, 
by the defense as well. So third and a long time. Third and 19. AKA Country Mile. Just four minutes left in the game. Too far to go for it. So this will be a big, big stop to get the defense. Tingler Back takes snap a long time looking to throw, has a receiver. Ooh, in mm. and out of the hands. Oh! <laughs> Trey King was there to pick it up, but he put it on the turf too, incomplete. He was going for the hit, I think, to keep the first down away. Yeah, and he didn't realize he the didn't ball. Didn't realize was he could have gotten the inner, it was number five has had a rough uh, rough catch this series. So fourth and twenty, and I believe we will get the defense off the field and see if the uh, second string offensive line and offense can close the game up with the last four minutes. Victorian back in the end zone to punt it away. Just gets it off, angled to the right side. And he'll let it bounce in front of him, and he'll take a roll as let's Dalton Kahn gets out of the way. Rolls all the way back inside the 35, down close to the 30. You get the 30 at a half-yard line where they'll spot the ball. Great, uh, great punt. Absolutely. Brings up his average punt by about 20 yards. Oof -da. Excuse me. And here we go. Good to see some folks that are uh, back on the field that haven't had some, some time with as the way the games have been close and uh, I, this is this is a great great uh, opportunity with such a must win game to let these guys on the field no doubt about it Seth Ford a quarterback two receivers down to the left one up top to the right handoff up the middle and over in goes Carson like seeing Jacob Carson get the ball he plays with so much passion just loves playing football for Ron Rock High School and uh, his mom does so much for the uh, booster club and for the program. And just it's fun to see him on the field. Game clock down to 3.15 to go here in the fourth quarter. Two receivers move over to the left side, one down to the right. There's Baker Burton, flip that around. Two to the right, one down to the left. I'll get my direction straight in a second. But Hoffman coming in motion. Ford takes a snap, hands off to Carson. Carson pushes the pile up across the 35. Be third down and five for the Dragons. Maybe six, I beg your pardon. We're going to be under two minutes going uh, down into fourth down unless... Unless Mr. Carson can get another four yard or six yards for a first down, which would then just end the game. Two receivers to the right, one down to the left. Seth Ford and Carson in the backfield. Waz coming in motion. Little jet sweep, hand off to Waz. Waz is trying to get the edge. Pushes the pile, but he won't make it for a first down. He gets up close, closer, but it's only down up to the 38, like a 37 yard line. Fourth and Three or four. Fourth and four, you're right, sir. 30 minute, 30 seconds, so about a minute and a half will be on the clock when Seth gives his punt, if they wait for the whole clock, which they should. Looks like it, everybody coming out for the punt, getting set up, play clock down, or game, excuse me, play clock down inside 10. And flag on the play. They're going to fall start against Round Rock. <laughs> Trey King ran out <laughs> right the last minute. And uh, don't know what happened there. But right at a minute 30, that's fine. I'll back him up a little bit further. Statement game, Mike. Big time. Oh, bad snap over the head. Nobody was ready. Not sure. <laughs> Y'all have to wait for the whistle. <laughs> Man, <laughs> Seth Ford has uh, had a rough couple of snaps from <laughs> the first time when Beck snapped the ball when the Stony Point defense was offsides to him thinking, what the hell's going on here? Please don't snap the ball until I'm ready. 
<laughs> Bless their hearts. Absolutely. <coughs> good times, good times. <laughs> and There's a good snap and a great kick. Abandon backs up. Let, a, let it roll. Take a drag and roll inside the 35. Not in the back. Is Bennett. Or Barnett, excuse me. So a minute 20 left in the game. I think it's safely in hand, Mike. I think you're right. At least I hope so. <laughs> Ron Rock Dragons up 43-7 to in a must-win game that really puts... Uh, whether it's the second, third, or fourth seed uh, in our in our in our control, we have direct control over that. We have another big game next week against Stony Point. I'm sorry, against uh, Cedar Ridge, but this was the game that needed to be won to control our destiny. And I couldn't be more proud of how these boys responded with what they had to overcome this week with Coach uh, with, with Coach Roberts and. You know, going to the funeral today, giving their respects, playing inside of inside of their own uh, skill and in, inside of their own uh, passion spot. It's been a great, great, great game. Two plays that started from the 30 all the way up now to the 46-yard line. And you're right, Bruce. Uh, this was a huge statement, uh, not only for the for the district, but for these kids. Uh, they now know they can play under great adversity, great stress, and come out on top. Another Wildcat snap to Kendall Thomas, takes it up across the 50, still on his feet to the 30, has the edge down to the 20, to the 15, pulled out of bounds, down inside the 15 yard line, we'll see where they spot him. He's wrestling to the ground. <laughs> Not sure what 38 is upset yeah, about. I don't either. All right, so it would be nice to hold them here and just keep them to seven points. And uh, 38 is Jonathan Briscoe. A little upset about that. Ball placed at the 13-yard line. First and 10 for the Tigers. Kendall Thomas takes a direct snap once again up the middle. Spins around, gets tackled inside the 10 down to the 9-yard line. And now there's a flag on the play. Not sure... A lot of celebrating going on by the Dragons. Well, the referees are calling the, the penalty now. Oh, right. The game is over. I, just I mean, again, they've got to play within... they got to play smarter and not lose control. I don't know which way the penalty is going to go, but he's got to play smart. doesn't matter if you're the first string or the second string. Looks like it's going to go against Stony Point, which... Uh, again, comical. Yeah, number 21, Jack Russell, on that last tackle, threw his hands in the air like he just won the lottery. And the clock was still moving, and then there's a flag on the play. It's, it's so. Our friend Jonathan Bis Briscoe, who was taken out after the previous play. So it looks like it was two different penalties. On us, the and then on them. And the unique portion was it looks like the penalty against Stony Point was after the play. So I don't know what our what, what our penalty was, but then it was on them to go back <laughs> to the 20-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Clock down at 33 seconds to go here in the game. Dragons on top, 43-7. to seven. And while we wait, Mike, I just have to uh, let's put give it up for the fans that stuck around through the weather. Absolutely, just uh, mm -hmm. pr proud of that. Let's give it up for Blake Carrera. He stood, stood through the whole game. He did. Too. Good job, Blake. That's, that's awesome. You. Blake's got to teach me how to do this. In the next thirty seconds too. Hand off up the middle and stopped by the Dragons as he gets close to the point. No gain on the play. Has to be pushed back a yard. Timeout taken. The 16 seconds to go by Sony Point. A must-have timeout when you're down by 36. You're listening to Round Rock Dragon Football on the KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. Yeah, 
Realtor Jen Griffith at Southern Roots Realty Group is on a mission to service her clients every real estate need, no matter how big or small, while building lifetime client relationships. Buying, selling, leasing, or investing, she and her team are here to help you through it all. Call 512-970-5130. That's 512-970-5130. Go Rock Football. Thanks, Blake. Second and 11. And Mike, I know we've talked about this a little bit, but uh, you know, this this is a game that could lead to a certain amount of momentum that will make Round Rock an extremely dangerous team come the playoffs. Tingler looking to throw, and he is met and dropped by Dalton Kime way back at the 31-yard line. And that's going to do it. That's a statement to end all statements that have been laid on the field tonight by the Round Rock Dragons as they defeat the Stony Point Tigers 43-7. to Wow. As a parent, as the color commentary, again, one of the best games I've seen in Round Rock football over the last eight years. Congratulations, Round Rock. Congratulations, Coach Cheatham. And uh, as said before, um, thank you, Coach Roberts, for everything that you, you've done and you definitely made an impact on this entire coaching staff and the entire football program. Overton takes the other side as his teammates are on the other side. That's unique. Okay. Good deal. <laughs> Anyways. And, uh, well, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, too, I follow a lot of these young men on Twitter. Thanks. <laughs> follow a lot of these young men on Twitter and to see to see their tributes, attributes, tributes, thanks, um, notes, encouragement all week long to uh, Coach Roberts and his family. And, um, and then for them to come out and uh, keep their wits about them, to keep their head in this game, to play with a purpose. But uh, I was going to say something um, pregame, but... Um, after the Vandegrift game, as I as y'all we alluded to, I, I missed last week. Um, but after the Vandegrift game, I, I met uh, a dear friend of mine at uh, Kirby Lane uh, in the evening, just to connect and catch up a little bit. While we were waiting for our table, uh, a few of the players, Titus and, and Trey, were outside, and a couple others. And I said, "Hey, Mr. Rose, what's happening?" and all that. And I said, "Hey, wow, great game." You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> anyways, the, the, the both those boys said, we're not going to lose anymore. We're tired of it. We know what's going on, and we don't want to do it anymore. We're not going to lose another game. And so I said, we'll just keep playing within yourself and, and do what you can do. And um, that was a, that was a huge, huge thing to hear from them. I mean, and they're backing it up. Two weeks later, they're 2 0. Yeah, so. you're right. You know, it was interesting. Two years ago, again, we, I'll refer back to this team from two years ago, but they lost a very close game to Cedar Ridge. I, I don't know if you remember. Oh, yeah. James Lynch was hurt. He was out of the game. It was Tate's game back after getting uh, injured and missing the Stony Point game. And they lost by three or four points. It was a really, really it was a great game. Yep. It was high scoring. And I, I got to be on the sideline for that game. And I got to listen to Coach Cheatham after the game. And he basically, his message to the team was, boys, we're not going to lose again for a while. We're going to be all right, and Cedar Ridge is going to be all right. But we're going to be healthy, and we're going to be a tough team to beat. They got to the fifth round of the playoffs because mm -hmm. Coach Cheatham built these guys up, and they believe in the program. Right. We didn't have necessarily that leadership last year. Not Coach's fault. Just right. we didn't. Just we had a lot of people that relied on the seniors from two years ago and yes. didn't, didn't step up. We've got seniors this year. We've got juniors that were very similar to those juniors from two and three years ago. Yep. And next year, this year and next year, we're going to be okay. And yeah. so I, I am very, very happy for what Coach Cheatham has been able to do. Uh, you know, him and I might disagree on certain things. I'm a huge Ron Rock fan. I'm a huge Coach Cheatham fan because he does the right thing with integrity. And our boys have a great role model to step up to. And I, I'm excited for what these guys get to do the rest of the year. And that's that's a great uh, great tribute to Coach Cheatham and, and all he does, but also, you know, his staff. You know, staff is dynamite as well. Great great individuals care about what's going on. And 
invest in these kids. These kids will give it back. And of course, you know, I mentioned the Booster Club all night long. Um, some great parents. You know, you're one of them. And your, your wife and, and all the other folks that care about their children and, and love this program and want the best for it. And so they, you, them, all work so hard to, to give everything they can so that there's not a worry, a concern. All these kids do is go out and play football, and that's, that's, that's a huge gift that hopefully someday these kids can understand, see, and be thankful for and, and pay it forward when they have kids of their own. So, Absolutely. So now we put together la this game, great game, great momentum. Next week is now upon us. We've got Cedar Ridge, who has beaten Round Rock two years in a row. Yep. Uh, they've won district two years in a row. They've lost to Vandergrift, and it's Vandergrift. I mean, Vandergrift's going to win the district unless something drastic happens. But this is now a game about pride. Yep. This is a Round Rock pride. There are five, five schools in Round Rock, and Cedar Ridge has owned the last two years. This game will be a great game to really tell these boys where they stand in Central Texas, in my yes. opinion. Yep. So I'm excited to see how they step up. Absolutely, yeah. Great game. It'll be at Kelly Reeves next week at the Palace. Uh, Blake, any thoughts, sir? Oh, well, that was... Uh, Something. <laughs> that was something. <laughs> it was. Uh, I mean, putting up 43 points, you know, defense came out strong. I mean, we only allowed, you know, seven points the entire game. I mean, that's just a incredible improvement from previous weeks. So yeah. I think I'm definitely really glad to see, you know, you said Cedar Ridge next week at the Palace. That's going to be a, a good test to see if, you know, if we can keep this, uh, this kind of um, performance up. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm very, very impressed with what I saw today. Very impressed. And, and since we're going to the Palace next week to play Cedar Ridge, you are not allowed to wear your K-Mac polo. <laughs> <laughs> and are we good for our, yes, uh, for our situation uh, <laughs> next week at K-Mac? <laughs> yeah, we're good. Thank you to everybody so far this evening. Mr. McLaughlin, thank you for being our QA tonight. Thank you to Blake for our, being our producer, to Bruce Kipperman, our color analyst. Thank you to Merle, Bert, Bert, uh, Merle Bertrand, to Suna Venkant, to Christine Weber, to Johnny Baeza, Chuck Licata, everybody at Byte Media. Thank you so much for being a part of this course we want to give one more let's give a couple more shout outs right let's welcome tina to the crowd <laughs> <laughs> right thank you for being uh welcoming and making mike rose uh, a happy individual and let's also uh before i go let's wish uh the davidson wildcats good luck tomorrow as they battle the maris red foxes uh and going for their sixth win of the season to make it six and two so and sorry for that but i'm right. excited for that and one of mel blank's uh, favorite cities of poughkeepsie new york poughkeepsie new york uh, and also once again um friends and family Supports of Ronald Dragon football, our thoughts and prayers to the Roberts family as uh, we mourn his loss and celebrate his life, and we thank him for all the gifts and uh, memories and uh, everything he's given to this program and the programs that he's been a part of across Texas. Um, this game, uh, obviously, I'm sure they speak for them, but uh, thank you to everyone for your thoughts and prayers and support of that. So we uh, we'll move forward uh, as we move on. So thank you to everybody. Uh, signing off here from Dr. R.L. Peters Jr. Field at Dragon Stadium on the campus of Round Rock High School. Well, my name is Mike Rose, the voice of the Dragon, signing off. And we'll see you next Friday night at the Palace in Austin. <laughs>